because he um, showed up for brunch on Sunday. And we're all like looking at him. He goes, my, my no. son says, oh, you should see the other guy. He, his, he has his first big wow. And he's got this big scrape and a bump on his eye. You know, leaning over. What, how did it happen? Leaning over to reach at something. And he just lost his balance and goes right hard on the, onto the head. It's, uh, it's 7.30. Yeah. It's 7.30 now. And I think we uh, can probably bring the, uh, the meeting to order. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Fran DeYoung. I am the Vice Chairman of the Planning Board. Unfortunately, John Ferrari, the Chairman, is out ill. Uh, he'll be not, uh, cannot attend the meeting, so um, I'll kind of hopefully fill in with the support of my able colleagues. Hopefully make sure I kind of touch all the bases the, uh, on the items on the agenda. Um, first off is a continued public hearing of 5060 West Main Street, the site plan review for the Golden Pond <coughs> Residence Care. Um, Jennifer, do we need to open the public hearing before? And then continue it. Um, I don't think we need to reopen, as it's been open, we've just been just continuing, continuing it. it. Um, but they have submitted a, a letter to the board requesting a continuation. They're not quite finished with their review with beta, and there's been some still outstanding issues. They've been working with beta for the last two weeks, but there's still some ongoing stuff, so they'd like a continuation just to resolve those issues before they're back before you. So that's correct, and they're looking for a date of October 30th. Um, yeah, so that was the date that, um, I wasn't at your last meeting, but that was the date that um, you had asked to leave open as much as possible to discuss um, some administrative stuff, I guess, mm -hmm. and to do the uh, discussion of emergency response. Um, mm -hmm. I've already invited uh, the two chiefs and whoever they choose to bring with them for that discussion at 7.30. Okay. Um, and because they're town officials, I think it's important that we... I agree, mm -hmm. I think it's very mm -hmm. timely, mm -hmm. especially given yeah. what Golden Pond represents. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how long you anticipate for that discussion. I would think an hour. I would think an hour, I yeah. That's probably fair. To be honest. Yeah. And other items, so we'd take, uh, obviously take those speakers first, and if there were additional items, we could just do another meeting sure. kind of thing. Sure. So then that would put you at 8.30 for Golden Pond? I think that's Golden probably Pond. fair for Golden so Pond So do you need a motion to continue the public hearing until October 30th at <coughs> 8.30? That's correct. Second. Motion. I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of moving it to October 30th at 8.30 for Golden Pond, say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstained? So carried. All right, we'll see the folks on the 30th. Okay, well that kind of knocks out a big chunk <laughs> of the next hour. <clears throat> the uh, next public hearing is not scheduled, and that's the 147 Lumber Street. That is not scheduled until 8.35. Um, so I know there's a bunch of people that are at ComCom, and there's other people that will come at that time. So in this interim space of about an hour, we will uh, take care of other business to be considered. Right, and I'll go through that list if there's, unless there's anything else from board members that we want to add, I'll kind of just start ticking some boxes. Awesome. Uh, as we go through this. All right, the first one, do I have it up? It is an a and plan for 207 Lumber Street, the Gorman Revocable Trust. Jennifer? Uh, are they in lobby? They are. Please come to the awesome. microphone, state your name and address. And uh, Good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Baptiste. I'm a uh, professional land surveyor from Westville, Mass. Um, I'm re representing tonight Mr. William uh, Gorman, along with his daughter, Diane, and his uh, son-in-law, uh, Dean Crosby. Uh, what you have before you is a division of Mr. Gorman's uh, parcel, uh, which his house is located on, designated as uh, 207 uh, Lumber Street. It's shown on the uh, plan as, uh, as lot one. And what we're doing is creating uh, a minimum size lot around his house and existing uh, out storage buildings. And the remaining parcel uh, is created uh, to comply with the uh, forestry plan that was approved uh, by the town of Huffington back in April of 2012. <laughs> basically, uh, what this plan is doing is just defining uh, that parcel 
that already is within the uh, the forestry program. So Jennifer, anything else to add to that? Um, no, just that the plan meets the requirements of the ANR planning is eligible for a signature. All three. Mm -hmm. So any other discussion by board members? Do we need to vote on? Go ahead, Frank. Um, can, for the home audience, can we explain where this is on Lumber Street? It's uh, at, at the intersection of Echo Brook Lane and Lumber Street. It would be, uh, I, I believe, in the north side of Lumber Street, right at the corner of Echo Brook Lane. <coughs> That's helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does that help for you, Frank? You get yes, a yes, yes. Any other questions by board members? Jennifer, do we need to vote on this? Or I vote to accept the plan yeah. and see its interest. So is there a motion to accept the plan as stated? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? Motion carries. Two signatures, Jennifer? All right, two signatures, and we'll have you guys on your way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck. There you go. Two signatures in the group. Set with uh, 207 lumber. Mm -hmm. I did have a question. All right. The next, uh, good luck, everybody. All right. All right. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is an ANR plan for 143 Spring Street. Diana DeGoria. And representing Diana. Hi, Mark Allen with Allen Engineering. I'm representing uh, Diana DeGoria. And uh, she is doing similar to. Uh, last applicant had just discussed uh, they have about a five acre parcel off of Spring Street at the corner of Lyford Road in Spring Street and uh, her mom has owned the land forever and she's cutting out the lot around her existing building and outbuildings and Diana's going to build a house on the remaining land so it's about a 66,000 square foot lot that uh, the original homestead is going to be on and the new lot's going to be about three and a half acres and it's in the agricultural one zone we meet all the building setbacks and that will be, will that only be one lot then? Or Correct. To kind of to further divide that or just going to kind just of one just lot. The, the one lot? Yep. So the mom will have her lot. She's going to stay in the home and Diana's going to have her new house built next to hers. Got it. Thank you. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Board members, Some questions, questions comments? That, that will be a shared driveway? No. No, actually it'll be a separate driveway. We're okay. going to, we need, we're going through a uh, scenic road hearing. Uh, we just submitted the application. I think we're going to be on not the 30th, but the first no meeting in November, because we got to eliminate some stone wall and a couple of trees. That's on Spring Street. On right. Spring Street. Two driveways on Spring Street, right? Is it? Is yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here. <coughs> Further questions from planning board members? How about Jen? Jen well, I'm saying it meets all the criteria for an ANR plan, so signatures so recommended. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is there a motion to approve the plan as stated? So moved. And second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion by board members? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. Motion carries. I was just going to say, should we get all the fun signing tonight? <laughs> Mark, that was probably the quickest. Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> that it could always be that way. <laughs> so what is it, one of them is about one and a half acre and the other is like three acres? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm.
right. The uh, next item on the docket is the Center School Reuse Advisory Survey. Uh, Je Jennifer, the letter came in, but if you want to provide some context. Um, yes, yeah, so, <coughs> so that was um, submitted um, before your last meeting to myself and John as chair of the board. The Center School Reuse Advisory Team is looking for input from the various boards and committees and departments about thoughts about what they may like to see happen with center school. And so this um, was their way of getting that information. <clears throat> John felt it would be, instead of him just filling it out, <clears throat> he would like your input as well. So I wasn't at the last meeting, but I guess it was discussed that you guys needed some time to think about it and mm -hmm. come up with some thoughts. So um, it's back before you tonight. Um, and then I guess John and I would fill it out on your behalf and send it into the team. Do you just just ran out of time last time. <laughs> Do I have any thoughts in particular? Um, Not to put you on the spot, but go ahead. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> well, did we hear that the land use department needs a different space than they currently, than they had in the old town hall? Is that right? Um, so there's been some um, discussion mm -hmm. that it may not be feasible for the land use department to return. Well, the land use department could return to the third floor, but all of right. our files could not return right. to the third floor. So um, for some of the departments, i.e. the building department, will say it's difficult for them to do their jobs on a daily basis without the access to all of those files. Whether or not the center school is the right spot, I don't know. I understand there was, and Frank could probably speak to this because he's on the committee, but I know there was a tour, and I understand that the building needs a lot of work. Um, so I'm not even sure how feasible even that is. but. I mean, I guess, you know, I know meeting space in the town is in the premium, so I would argue mm -hmm. that at a minimum, some meeting space would be mm -hmm. a good thought for the center school, um, and definitely file storage of some kind. Um, we are in the planning department, we are busting at the seams with plans and files and different kinds of things. Obviously, it'd be nice to be near those. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm having to drive to Fruit Street all the time, right, Kobe? Is that what well, they are? Yeah, right now they're in the basement at uh, DPW. So. Oh, convenient. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, um, there's, there's no way to digitize your files. So we have, a, we have a lot of stuff digitally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but not the older stuff. The older stuff is it's more difficult. And, and you have to keep it for X amount of And there's certain things we have to keep yeah. on paper yeah. and certain things we have to keep in perpetuity. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. Frank, you want to please give some context? Um, well, I missed that last meeting, and, and John and I were discussing maybe we should have uh, what should we do, how do we get a person to be a backup, and it turns out we needed to elect a backup, which I believe we did last week, and uh, last meeting, and I forget exactly what happened. It was a little bit late when we discussed it. Uh, as far as uh, what I, I think, think should Amy's be in the letter. Thank you, yeah. thank you, Amy. <laughs> uh, one of the things we discussed uh, is that uh, you and I and, and John were on the board and uh, Ken put together a really excellent letter uh, outlining what we think as a board we wanted to get ahead of the curve uh, what should be done with uh, that building and that's pretty much the context of um, Ken's outline because Ken's on the board uh, on the committee now and um, I, I wasn't necessarily thinking that we'd submit a separate uh, submission, but um, you know, I've, I've talked to John about it, and I think that sure. that letter is pretty dead on. But the new members haven't seen it, so I probably should have gotten that. And, I was just going to say we could see a copy of it, yeah. Though, yeah, but we I, can I maybe make some additions tonight. But I would like to see that. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't. Um, I think I emailed it to Claire right at one point. She had asked me for it when the committee was formed, um, so I, I can get a hold of a copy of that. But the, the basic outline of it is that we're looking for office space for the town, uh, to move the school administration into that building, um, uh, parks and rec could use a youth center, and also move them out of uh, next door where we're paying rent uh, for them. And the idea is not to have any town offices be paying rent for uh, office space. Um, and uh, where's that, Frank? Where are they paying? Rent? Uh, Park Park High School, 85, right here, 85, in front of Carrie. 
and it's it's okay that they're doing that. They have an income stream, and there it's it's not an expense on overhead. But we can just do better if we're in some place that we own. Um, is kind of the idea that we're that we're thinking. Um, it all depends on the structural integrity of the building and the cost that it will take to update and revamp. Um, there's some idea of having uh, customer facing people being in town hall and then the papers and everything like that, the back end be in, in uh, the back end of the center school. Uh, some parts of the school may be able to be used. Um, some parts of the building may not be able to be used. It's uh, John was on the uh, permanent building committee when they when they did the original tour, and we're going, we're trying to figure out a, a, a cost basis of what we'll do with the building. What's the basis of running it per year if it's empty? Uh, what's the basis of cost basis of, of running it uh, if we decide to do other things with it? If we rent it out, what, what do we have to do? If we use it ourselves, what do we have to do? Um, there's some talk that uh, schools could use it, but then we found out that because of the school loans to build um, the new elementary school, Marathon School, uh, we're specifically not allowed to use Center School after the Marathon School comes online. As a school as space. As a school space. Okay. So uh, unless it's an extreme emergency, which may or may not be what's coming up down the line, but uh, it, there's a lot of balls in play, but mostly it includes um, the front runners are parks and rec, office space for school administration, and uh, office space for the town. What about, let me just piggyback on that. Uh, office space for parks and rec for the town, maybe during a nine to five window, but then afterwards in the evening, opening it up for meeting space for different community mm -hmm. groups. I will tell you that that is a premium in the town. Mm -hmm. I, from running Little League, the minimum that anybody will charge you now is close to $50 an hour just to rent out a room and some chairs. So think of that as you're having those discussions. It's not gonna pay for it, but it potentially could be set. Not just community group, but even for town uh, boards and committees. Right, that's what I was thinking like too. It's, since we've been out of town, even when we were at town hall, as you know, space yeah. was as a premium, but since we've been out of town hall, it's been very, very difficult to try to schedule meetings and get things done. I mean, we're really limited to the senior center and this space, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And hopefully as soon as the library opens, that will open up some, mm -hmm. some more space for us. But, you know, it's been very, very difficult to find space to, to have these meetings. That's, that's a great point. I think it's a great point too. I know that there's, um, there's a substantial cost involved to retrofit the building to be ADA accessible as a minimum, and then whatever repairs that need to happen. Um, and I know because of the historic district, it's important to keep the, the facade. And I think that it's not, not just important to comply, but it's, it's uh, sort of the heart and soul of our, you know, the downtown right next to the common. So I know the letter asked about what would be the important features. And I think maintain, you know, keeping the building, if at all possible, however it's used, would be um, important. I mean, that would be a whole different look and a whole different situation if the building were to go away. And, um, I know that when the center school question was first coming up, there was an awful lot of talk about a youth center, which has been a conversation that we have, you know, the town has talked about for a long time. And it does have a relatively new gym, mm -hmm. and it does have a serviceable industrial kitchen. So those are features that could um, definitely be capitalized on. It would be nice to preserve the use if the, if the town holds on to it for itself. Um, I was, uh, the only thing I thought about the, um, I, the, the planning board stores, the town offices, um, there's also a whole back lot in, that mm -hmm. the town owns, yeah. and I, I don't know if it makes any sense at all to utilize it for municipal parking to alleviate the, the parking situation I think that a lot of people feel it's a little bit tucked away too far to be useful but um, it would at least be important to explore that I think where parking is such a such an issue and then the only other thing I thought of that's you know far different from any of those <laughs> ideas I would really like personally I would really like to see town hall consolidated and to be able to have all your storage and uh, documents and everything in one place 
and the prospect of additional meeting room is, is very attractive. Um, but for a while, I know that it's been talked about, um, and I have no idea where the planning is or anything, but um, uh, the idea of a marathon museum, and it's right at the start of the marathon. So it just uh, strikes me as something to think about in particular. There is discussion of a marathon museum um, on the there is. Uh, legacy I farm yeah. property. Yep, yeah. there has been yeah. for a long time, yeah. right. And then I just I want I wanted to piggyback on what um, Muriel said in regards to parking. Um, the Upper Charles Trail Committee is in favor of a multi-use parking um, for that property. There are trails back through that area, yeah. so providing a trailhead and access to those trails would be really yeah, important that's for them right. to continue um, their vision mm -hmm. of completing the trail and then having access to that side of town. Yeah, perfect. Um, I agree with what everyone else has said. I had a couple other thoughts that um, it is in a quiet residential neighborhood, so I would just, I think any use should be respectful of being fairly quiet and not too disruptive to the neighbors. And then because it's a historic building, you know, we all know that we have to preserve the facade, but I really worry about the building being vacant. If it becomes vacant for too long, it will deteriorate further and mm -hmm. it will be more expensive to repair. So I, I hope they have a plan that can be, you know, brought into place get started pretty soon after it. Uh, I agree. It's a real no worry. longer needed as a school. Is there a timing on that, Frank? Uh, the timing's kind of a little bit odd because our town meeting is in uh, May and we would like to get um, some ideas in play uh, before then because it'd have to be approved at town meeting. Uh, but we're also being realistic if, if we cannot and there might be delays with the marathon school, and so that's why we're looking at cost. If the building is empty for all or part of a year, what will that cost the town? So we can understand what the expenses are, no matter what we do, and, and, and over whatever time frame uh, that things happen. Uh, we may not, we hopefully will have some idea what we want to do, and we'll be able to implement like a youth center. Um, any of the more modern classrooms alone are more space than all, each of the departments that we have in town hall um and i don't the, think there's any modern classrooms no. in that <laughs> and, and then the more rear the rear section as opposed to front section uh, um, i think they're still 50 years old <laughs> uh, yeah it's all relative uh, <laughs> yeah and um it, it's it's uh you know it's it's a multifaceted approach that we're taking so uh for the for the public who's interested in this critical exploration piece. When's your next meeting? Um, I don't know. <laughs> next meeting's coming up sometime soon. Uh, we have um, forums coming up where people will be invited to share their ideas like they're okay. doing Wednesday about the school fields uh, and people will definitely be informed and updated and be able to discuss ideas and Amy one of the others is on a committee so um, right. they, that neighborhood has input into what's, what's happening uh, what may happen and um, we're looking at you know all the angles uh, what's the best what's best for the town and Frank can you clarify for me because I think you said at our first meeting here after you uh, met with the committee that all the members had to agree or be in favor of considering the uh, possibility of the phone ringing. The possibility of the phone ringing. <laughs> Sorry. The possibility of um, potentially tearing it down and building from scratch. Did you say that? Mm -hmm. Did I misunderstand selling that? Selling it. I think it was selling <laughs> it. So, I, I, selling I it's you, okay, something that I, should be looked at. But it's I, I thought you had mentioned that everyone had to at least have that as a consideration. And I was just oh. curious how realistic that consideration was. I, I don't think I said anything I like thought, that. Okay, I must I have know. misunderstood what no. you said then. That's been kind of weighing on me a little bit. So, Frank, I hope I didn't say that. Uh, I thought you did, uh, but... Uh, it looks like there's a um, Center School Reuse Advisory Team meeting on Wednesday, October 25th at 6.30. Where, did, where is it? Where's that? I doesn't give a location. We, we've been meeting at Parks and Rec's office space. Uh, 85, 85 Main Street. Yeah. So 6.30 on Wednesday the 25th. And Frank. residents will be... There'll be forums for residents coming. And there will right? be public yeah. forums. Okay. Frank, question for you. Um, I kind of like the idea of the 
a, um, a youth center because, you know, obviously the kids don't really have any place to go. Um, did, did you guys talk about anything that could be in there as part of that? Well, there's the gymnasium that I think is the newest part of the building and um, an office space for parks and rec. Yeah. And no, I was just wondering, could we do something, if we did the youth center, could we do something like ping pong tables and pool tables or some kind of active recreational for the kids? That's it, because the gym would be a gym. The parks and recreation is 100% um, in favor yeah. of that usage for that building yeah. because of the gym space. I mean, it is, it is a key area for us to have. And, uh, specific ideas, I don't know that they've necessarily been laid out, but clearly um, it would be used for parks and rec programs, basketball, any kind of indoor program that you can do, but um, I'm not sure uh, about you know that, that type of thing. But yeah. I hear what you're saying. I, I, some kind of passive recreation. Pass, you know, you yeah, go to passive, a gym, you're going yeah, yeah, right. to right. run around and stuff, but someplace just for the kids to kind of hang out, right? And mm -hmm. Instead, no. of, instead of roaming is, the streets. Is, is it just the gym or is it the gym and some of uh, adjoining rooms? Right, so that's right. probably all TBD. Yeah, yeah. Just, be the gym yeah. and the Only because we're talking about it, and I know it's a little odd, but like some of the boys and girls clubs will have, I mean, this is like a little bit pie in the sky, but we might as well dream big, <laughs> you know, have a, like a music area. I mean, there are all kinds of different ways that you can tap yeah. into different um, interest areas if you had the space and the and the resources. Well, I, think, I think they're looking for like bigger picture. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. not like no, I know. Specific. Yeah, specific. But we had the ear of the parks and rec person. <laughs> yeah. so I, I hear you. Just <laughs> saying. So I thought I, she'd just I, take I it I actually out. think that's a, you know, that's a very interesting idea. I think, you know, like you said, we're thinking probably a little bit larger scale on, oh yeah, like you said, specific types of programs, whether they be basketball, a little less. Mm -hmm passive you know recreation as least as, as where i've been thinking but that's a great you know that's a great thought i hadn't really given that a lot of consideration well, thanks for listening yep. you know i had one more thought that yep. i forgot um i used to do some website work for um a nonprofit in newton and when newton decommissioned one of their schools the car school they allowed nonprofits to rent rooms out on the first floor which was handicapped accessible as long as they would renovate the room they were using and they, they paid a small fee and they did that for a couple of years till they needed the school again as a school. But anyway, that's a possible I idea that would help with renovations. Yeah, especially the nonprofit piece with handicap accessibility. It's right, it's, it's only it's the not accessible. It's only part of the school is accessible right. at the moment. Yeah, right. So it's not even truly, yeah. truly accessible. It's it really has a long way to go. I know it's not accessible to the upstairs schools, <coughs> right. but yeah. even. The gym? It's modestly accessible. It's not, it doesn't. Does that pass muster at the state level? The Mine. gym, you can get into the Mine. gym, I'm exactly. sure. Exactly. Right. Yeah. The other ones? The ground floor is the f first floor door. I'm not sure what the terminology I guess it would be the ground floor. Uh, the door in the middle, after you come into the driveway on the right side, mm -hmm. uh, is accessible. And there is an elevator for the other stuff, but it's, it's not modern. So uh, yeah. really, the first floor is the only floor that's. In ground floor is the only floor. I was going to say, in Newton, they only let people run out the first floor rooms because they had the same issue of the upstairs not being mm. accessible. Yeah. That's good. Good, good feedback. Yeah. Any other questions there? Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Frank, for the insights. Um, so action items on that? Uh, so I, I took a list, and between Comey and I, will go through them, and I'll, I'll circle back with John and see how he wants to handle that. And, but I'll also forward you all the previous letter that was sent <coughs> oh, thank with, you. by the previous board. Thanks. Appreciate that. Very good. Uh, if nothing else, on the Center School Reuse Advisory, we'll move on to the next item, and that is Zoning Advisory Committee. Um, so I am the liaison to the ZAC. And he didn't want to be vice chair. He made that perfectly clear. I did not, I don't know. One, one is enough. I, one tried to nominate him. I, no, yeah, that's right. I, I respectfully demurred. That's right. Um, but they have their meeting next, this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, the public, uh, let's call it a public hearing meeting, but a meeting open to the public to get any ideas, thoughts, and comments around areas that Zach should look at. Uh, so for those that don't know, Zach meets uh, bi-weekly uh, up and through February, and they'll uh, essentially research, discuss, and put forth to this body uh, suggestions and recommendations that would go on the town warrant. Uh, so, for example, things in the past have been uh, uh, marijuana dispensaries has come up, uh, lighting, 
uh, you know, requirements uh, has come up for discussion as well. I'm trying to think of some other signs. Like, signs have signs. come up. Always signs. I know, and I was thinking uh, that too. Doggy daycare one. was last year. Doggy yep, daycare. The doggy daycare. Yeah. So all the cutting edge uh, <laughs> issues that the town is facing. Zach, and, and, and to, to the chairman's credit, and there's a group of 20 this year. So the thought is it's hopefully fairly well represented, to, or represented uh, of the townspeople. Uh, so my the request here is if there's any ideas or thoughts or issues that you think Zach should be reviewing. Uh, and again, that usually percolates back up to this body uh, that we then can make a uh, kind of up or down call as to whether or not it gets added to the warrant. It actually has to come to this. There's another group oh, too, right. though, right? I thought there was another body. Does it all come to us? I thought there was uh, all else. zoning changes will come through the planning board. Yeah. If there's general bylaw changes, they'll go through the board of selectmen. That's what I was thinking. There's an, uh, some other, but and we'll hold a public hearing on those in the spring. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question. I thought we had 15 members or something like that was that were nominated. 19. 19, 19 20. plus Fran. Yeah. 19 plus Fran. That makes her a baker's <laughs> dozen. That's 20. <laughs> <laughs> they all showed up. Uh, pretty all good. except for one, and he was traveling. Yes. He been there if he yes. It was. It was. Everybody got out. Right. John did a nice job of allowing everybody to kind of introduce themselves, talk a little bit about you know what their area of interests were. And uh, but for those that don't know, John Gattino John was Gattino. the chair. Uh, he was voted as the chair. Yes. Um, so and David Hamaker was He's voted vice as vice chair. But anyway, I thought it was an, a nice introductory meeting with a group that large. A lot of times, nobody doesn't really know who they're sitting next to. Uh, so the hope is that will be a fairly um, fruitful body. So is that it's going to be a 20 member board? Yeah, you appointed yeah. them. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah. yeah. So we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we didn't go through the process of whittling anybody down. So right. um, it's, <laughs> it was brought to my attention. I just want to mention this. Uh, I guess this is more for the previous board members. I was questioned about our decision on a 20 member Zach board. Um, and it was said to me that the previous board members had agreed that this was a nine member position. So they were surprised that we. There is no limit. There's okay. no documentation to that effect. So <coughs> that was what I said. We posted that there was no um, limit that we didn't put, mm -hmm. but there was an understanding that the previous board had put a limit on it. So <coughs> I just wanted to ask about that. So oh, no. Yeah. But I think that it's worth thinking about the years. next time. And not that, I mean, we loved, yes. <coughs> we, we appreciate the idea of new people and a lot of people yeah. and new voices coming in. But it is something to think about. Yeah, um, not to interrupt Muriel, but um, John and Ferrari and I have already had that conversation a little bit. Um, well, again, we do appreciate the number of people that have decided to volunteer. It isn't, a, it's, it's going to be a challenge mm -hmm. managing the thoughts and ideas of 20 right. diverse people. And um, it, it's not pro probably not a bad idea to limit it in some way. Um, and so John and I have already had that conversation that maybe we wait until sort of after the Zach season to have that conversation so that we don't make it seem like we're doing it based on this group exactly. of people. Exactly. Um, but that, you know, it's something that the board feels like it's good. It, it probably, you know. The, but the difficulty we, we experienced was that we hadn't set up a process. We didn't invite people in to introduce themselves and have any sort of Sure. Decision well, process and so forth. So that so, whole thing needs to be looked at. But that's so that what I'm getting at. I was told that the previous planning board makeup had put those processes into place. So that's why I'm mm -hmm. asking because I was well, questioned if about they it. They did. Neither myself, Elaine, nor Corby right. know anything about it. Okay. So, so <laughs> well, I, you know, my response was that when we had the discussion here that night. Um, I would have thought the previous board members might have brought it up, and no one did. So I'm just questioning. Um, yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. I, I specifically, when this all came up, asked yeah. Elaine that question, okay. and she said there was no limit. The bo it's up to the planning board. Well, thank you for clarifying that. <coughs> I, just want, I just really wanted that for the record. Yeah. Because. Um, and um, and so to to Muriel's point, there's like a process, or how do you weed people out, or whatever. Like one of the thoughts that I had was just if we say seven people or nine people or whatever, it's the first nine that submit an application. Just, I mean, it's the easiest way to do it, especially if it's people you don't know. Right. You know. And it, it, we really do want to see um, 
as much as possible new voices, diverse voices on something like that. So, yeah, but just something to think about in the future. Right. Yeah. This, like, this board has a limit of nine on it, right? Yes, you're board. an elected yes. board, yes. I think, well, we can discuss it at the end of the season, but I think I would lean against just the first nine that sign up. I'd rather have a few from each side of town, kind of, you make sure, you know, some new people, some veterans. That they I don't disagree, but, Amy, I'm yeah. not necessarily. Um, but I, I, we were just spitballing Yeah, ideas. welcome yeah. the conversation to, mm -hmm. to see how that goes. And I think, you know, you, you have to have a bit more formal process. Sure. Right, so potential interviews, people come from the board, and... And some criteria, right, so people know what you're... Deciding yeah. what you're trying right, to so decide. So it's just not pulling names out of a hat. If I could just make a suggestion, though, about Please. publicity for the Zoning Advisory Committee. Um, is I think I mentioned via email that it's, they scheduled their public forum for the same night as the big athletics field public forum, the exact same time and everything. And I've, I've talked to some people who want to really want to attend the athletics field forum because they have kids who play sports, but they also have ideas about zoning. So I think that it's really important to publicize these opportunities for people to speak mm -hmm. out about zoning. And I believe they can submit via email if they're not mm -hmm. able to attend. Mm -hmm. That's right. But there's just, I, all year long, I've heard really high interest in zoning. People upset when something comes to their neighborhood and they may want to suggest a positive change. Yeah, they want to make sure they're included. Yeah, they, so in the, in the ad that went on the website and to all the departments and boards and committees, it, it does say that you can submit, it actually recommends, even if you're going to attend, that, you, write it that you put it in writing in advance so that the Zach has it in advance as well. Um, send us my email, um, but I'm sure any one of the Zach members would welcome a conversation sure. with anybody. Is there a deadline for submittals to be considered? Um, it was today. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't receive any. So, so I, so I mean, I'm I guess not, but if somebody a, brings you one tomorrow, I'm I not going to not accept I did, it. You know, so. I'm on the planning board. I didn't know they had met already, and I had specifically asked to know about that. So, I mean, I don't know how the public would know, um, particularly that um, because you got it in your packet over the weekend about the public forum for next the public week. forum. But I didn't know they had met to organize. I thought we talked at the last meeting. So that's when I got elected to it, right? So we were meeting. Uh, I just asked that night to know when they were meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't no, you weren't here. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. I'm to but I'm just, <laughs> um, I'm just asking process-wise for people who are sort of gearing up, ramping up, um, is it a hard and fast deadline, or is this committee going to receive public input for well, so it's a, a short, short period of time? It's a short, shorter season this year that because of the new charter, our requirements for town meeting are shorter and so we have to have everything done by the end of this calendar year and so I'm not saying Z Zach questions are not necessarily money questions I mean the budget it, schedule it doesn't is, matter, it doesn't matter. is closing in December 31st okay yeah. um, so I'm not saying it's a, it's not a hard and fast I'm not I'm not saying either way I'm just saying we have to be conscious that at some point we have to cut it off yes I and agree. So if people can't make it on Wednesday, totally get that. Um, you know, there'll be opportunities to come to other Zach meetings to express, but it may be a, also a situation with that things get <coughs> delayed to the following year's town meeting and don't get uh, addressed at this town meeting mm -hmm. because Zach doesn't have enough time to review. Yeah, and that right that day. and that, that could have happened if everybody well, we was right on the ball and they had sent year, in right. everything. And that right. happens every year. Right. Exactly. Yeah, right. So I understand that. Yeah. So, so that I, I guess that brings up a broader question for me. If we are going to, um, and as someone who's had experience trying to manage the uh, town meeting calendar, if we are going to stay fixed on this kind of um, mm -hmm. schedule, yep. which I support, yep. um, is it also <coughs> uh, important to think about establishing Zach earlier? Yes. Okay. And um, so this is happening with a lot of boards and committees that are we're used to a different sort of process, mm -hmm. um, i.e. CPC. Yep, we're struggling <laughs> there. Yep, us, uh, Zach, those kinds of things. So um, we all knew that the charter, you know, went through, and but none of us really paid attention, I guess, to the new those kinds of changes. Some of us did. Yeah. <laughs> so um, now that we are been made aware <laughs> next year I think things will look a little different and start a little or it's, okay. it's we're pushing it into the summer which sometimes is hard to you know establish committees and do public hearings and those kinds of things but I think 
once we get that process going, people will know that's how it works and be prepared I for agree. it. And I agree. So I think you know this year it's going to be a challenge, and this year it's going to probably not look as pretty as we would all like. But I think going forward it will be better. Yeah, and I, I guess thinking about the summer too, the summer is hugely challenging, like mm -hmm. impossible. So it really is talking about um, almost starting the 2019 Zach at using Zach as an example before long before we're even meeting at town meeting yep. for 2018. So, you know, it'll be starting up again right away almost. Or yeah. like, well, I would probably suggest after the election because if there's a turnover on the planning board, like... Well, Zach is not true. elected though. No, no, but no. you guys are, you're their appointing authority. Yeah, right. Right. So I'm, I was just suggesting that wait till after the election and that way the new planning board appoints the but then and I'm not you, you know whatever if that's what we decide but then that leaves the new um, Zach committee with the summer to get ramped up and organized yeah, sure. and that's mm -hmm. hard yeah well but it, it, there's a lot that can be done behind the scenes over the summer so that they can hold like their first public forum in September Se early September, September. Early when nothing September. else is happening when nothing else is going on <laughs> Yeah. When there's no back to school nights. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. So, so let me do this, just kind of bring it full circle. Sure. Uh, I am interested in the ideas for Zach. Uh, so anything that you think Zach should be um, thinking about or discussing uh, that may come up or in front of the town warrant next May, we'll need to review it in the next 60 days, <laughs> essentially, yep. if it's going to make it. Now, a lot of these things don't necessarily make it every single year. <laughs> so it could be something that we feel it's important and, you carry and we carry over. Is there a process for that? Because is there are there things we're carrying over from last yeah, year? There's a oh. couple items that okay. are sort of on the, they weren't done last year, mm -hmm. carried over for consideration this year. They may or may not get considered this year. Um, one is Airbnb regulations right. and okay. one is um, lighting through the design review board. So um, okay. those two items are on the table for discussion and Zach, whether or not they go forward, it's yet to be determined. But can they I, were. Can I ask about the lighting thing through the design review board? What is that? <clears throat> so there's been some instances um, during design review that <clears throat> um, their design review doesn't feel that they have enough teeth where it comes to reviewing lighting. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the biggest issue really has been the tower at the Unibank yeah, and the internal it's lighting. On my list. <laughs> and the internal lighting. That so it becomes external lighting. That's what I what I think is interesting. Right. So that's, that's something I really <laughs> want the So that's on the list. Consider, that's right? on the list. Because I mean it just it sort of flies in the face of the stated law, right? It doesn't comply with the Except it's considered internal lighting. It is internal lighting, mm -hmm. but it's intentionally meant to be external. Correct. So I think I think that's something we have to we have to right, so address. it is on the list, and Rhea McNamara, who's on the design review board and on Zach, will make sure that it gets discussed. Yes. Awesome! I, I, I look forward to that I, discussion. I think that lighting has been in perpetuity. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always on. Well, and that—that's another question I have actually for the Zach or for you. So lighting, you know, lighting and uh, regulations and so forth changes. How do we sort of keep pace with? Um, you know, the industry best practices for lighting. So I know, I think it's either this board or it's on Zach, we actually brought in some industry experts to kind of bring us, if not up to speed, to say, hey, here's what's going on, right? Yeah. Here's where a bylaw or a regulation that you guys put forth five years ago due to technology or what have you, that's out, right? Right. So, I mean, I, again, Zach had a couple, was it Zach or this group? Must have been Zach. I think it was Zach. We brought in two or three different industry folks. Now, again, were the industry experts? No, but they were knowledgeable and yeah, yeah. years of experience. Yeah. So at least then Zach, when they're, when they're discussing something, had a point of reference. Mm -hmm. right? So they do, right? So they do bring in Yeah, I, I just wanted to know for my and, own. And, and if you look in our, in our our bylaw regarding lighting, it does refer to the, the, the standard, the national standards for lighting. Mm -hmm. um, Right. In general, so right. as those get amended, our bylaw I think conforms. It, abs it absorbs. It sure. conforms to mm -hmm. the yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, I, I think I don't. I think those were recently done, so I don't think those are due for a whole new overhaul at this point. But I think yeah. you know maybe in five years they will be. Who knows? Like you know what I mean. So I think we're not seeing huge changes um, from what our bylaw says. But like if people are coming in with site plans that the lighting is very different from what our bylaw allows or requires and they're looking for all kinds of waivers then maybe it's time for us to look at a 
yeah. and overall. Yeah. So kind of like storm water. I want lighting to stay on the site. That's what I want. I want lighting. It's to supposed to. Right. I know. I know. It's Tell that to the to. internal light at the Unibank. So anything uh, else that you got? Last one. I had a couple okay. that uh, the resident had brought up know. to me. Um, I don't know if this is for Zach or not, but um, there's the National Complete Streets Coalition that has some guidelines for making streets safer. So I don't know if we could adopt that as part of so our So that's bylaws. actually a planning board action would be okay. a complete streets policy, Okay. Um, which is on my list of things to at some point bring up with the board. Okay, <laughs> and the same thing for Vision Zero Network, which is, which is what? Uh, Vision Zero Eliminating Traffic Fatalities. Um, oh, I don't know that one. Um, similar. I would imagine that's not zoning, though, so. Okay. But I'll look into it. So Frank, Fran, you said you were interested in ideas. Yes. So how do you want to move forward with that? If, like Jen said, to send her an email if we have an idea. Do you want to just be copied on that? Or? Yeah, I would want to be copied on that because on Wednesday's meeting, what the chairman will do, he'll solicit input from everybody as well as the public. And I'd just like to make sure that the planning board is represented with ideas that we think okay. they should be under consideration for. I'm just so the historic district is meeting Wednesday with a similar time. So if we have any ideas, it would be hard for us to submit them. <laughs> well, and again, if you get ideas on Wednesday from Historic and you want to give them to me on, on Thursday, Thursday okay. I can forward them to the Zach. That's okay. not right. a problem. Okay. It's, it's, I just wanted fluid. to make sure, right, that there was a little bit of fluidity in the uh, the deadline. Uh, yes. Because yeah. right. we'll meet on Wednesday and we'll only get meet again for two weeks. So, right. yeah. Um, one other item that I had, and I, I honestly don't know if it's in the bylaws in any way, but it's hours of operation. I'd like that to be talked about and discussed. Like for commercial enterprises, exactly. So it's changed or just? Well, we have. I don't think we you have a we limit, so we have a twenty-four-seven grocery it's store, for example. It's difficult to limit limit business hours of operation, but in your zoning. But I will. I'll put that as a. I just want to talk about yep. it. I want to understand the complexities of it, and uh, and I don't know that everybody feels like me. I assume that everybody doesn't feel like me. But um, it's at least worth having a vibrant conversation about it if it's possible. To. Okay. Best shop is open 24 hours a day. 24 7. And by the way, seven. I went at 2 a.m. for candy canes one time, so, you know, <laughs> I got yeah. some nerve complaining. It's but nice he, sometimes when I leave here and I'm there to grab stuff. And I don't, I, I, whenever I say something like this, by the way, it always kind of worries me a little bit because I don't really mean to single out Price Chopper as a, a problem you point. You did, I did. But it, um, but you know whether or not it's utilized 24/7 vibrantly, and that's a business choice for them because they have the right to do it, I guess. But I do know that the lights shine down on the neighbors be behind them 24/7, and and that's an imposition. And if you know if we can have the conversation, and if we and if people want to limit hours, and we can, we should at least have the conversation. So in our general uh, zoning bylaw. It just says the hours of operation of a business upon the premise shall be determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals in a special permit. If so that's if they need a special permit. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. If they don't need a special permit, then it's, then it's just right. Okay. That's right. right. So, okay. Gotcha. Very good. Anything else, Zach, related? Going once, going twice. Email them to myself and Fran if you yes. So, oh, because I stated them, do I then have to email them? Or you no, have it. Thank I you. Really All right, perfect. Very good. Thank you very much for the feedback and input, everybody. Next on the docket, master plan implementation update. So, Jennifer? yeah, so that was actually added by John. Um, he basically just wanted to bring it to your attention for a future meeting. If you could all just take a look at some point at the master plan implementation plan um, on how we are going to proceed with some of the implementation items that are charged to us. Mm -hmm. But also, he, uh, I suggested that maybe we want to send a letter to the other boards and committees and departments that are charged with implementation and say, hey, back in April, we charged you with some of this implementation. You know, you want to give us an update as to how you're proceeding or when you might start proceeding or just to keep a bug in everyone's ear that this is a thing and a living document and it shouldn't be sitting on a shelf somewhere. Gentle nudge. I, I would, really I would appreciate that. 100%. I think that's a great idea. That's one of the things I want to talk about at our next meeting. And maybe if we have time, we can squeeze that in and just. So, come yeah, up with so a plan. I guess then if everybody wants to take, have a time to look at the implementation plan, I had given you all hard copies at one point. Yep. And it's also available on our website. So, if you want for our next meeting on the 30th, I'll put it on the agenda as, an, as a discussion item. That'd be great. 
And it's on the planning board website? It should be on, yeah, it is on the planning board website, right on the front page of the planning board website. You should have one of those nice hard copies, right? You, I you gave everybody a nice hard copy, but I, if you lost it or need another oh, one, I can I get it I have the master plan. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's good. It's with it. It's and the implementation <laughs> plan is in the back. It's in the okay. back, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I think your name's on like five things. Oh. <laughs> I know. Historic, Historic district. district. <laughs> yes. We're going to discuss Wednesday. All right. <laughs> the next item is the minutes for September 11th. So did everybody get an opportunity to review said minutes? I did indeed. A lovely job again. Was that? Right. The minutes. You did a great job. September 11th. Thank you. Kobe, so noted. Well okay, I will put it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Don't miss that. All right. Any other questions, comments to the minutes from September 11th? I'll move the minutes. <coughs> I'll second that. Uh, moved and seconded to approve the minutes as stated. All those in favor? All right. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, how do you vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? Motion carries. The minutes are approved. Do you want to just um, go over the, what we talked about before we were on camera about mm -hmm. this? Mr. Bar yes. yes. Yes, so there is a... Is that under correspondence? Yes. That would be under, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Merle. That would be the last one under correspondence. <laughs> a letter uh, from Mr. Papa Nicholas to Mr. Barbieri. Well, it's to about you, Mr. about Mr. Barbieri. To, to us, about Mr. Barbieri. So, Jennifer, I just want to give the, the high level. Um, sure. So um, the the previous, the older, not older, the last board, <laughs> the longer term board members um, may remember Box Mill Road, um, which was a plan that was approved um, as an A&R plan, but because Box Mill Road was a paper street, you needed to get a subdivision approval for the construction of the street. Um, so he came in and did that, and I believe there's three house lots on the street. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then he had a side agreement, I understand, from what I understand, with Mr. Papa Nicholas, who lives at who lived at Five Leonard Street, um, to deed him a parcel of land that had a garage on it. And there was some conversation about the garage was going to be torn down or was going to be maintained. I don't even know the whole story, but um, I guess now uh, Mr. Papa Nicholas had put his house up for sale wanted that transaction happen prior to that it didn't happen for various reasons Mr. Barbieri was holding back and wanting some additional considerations and Mr. Papa Nicholas is feeling kind of stuck. He ended up selling his lot anyway but he still has an agreement with the people that bought his lot that he would work to get this transfer of land to happen. Uh, I believe Mr. Barbieri has applied through the building department for a demo permit for the garage. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's been issued yet or not. But it was approved. It was approved but not issued. Um, so I don't know how that all plays into it. But Mr. Pum Nicholas is just looking for some assistance from anybody. <laughs> um, the issue for us is that the subdivision approval that was issued by the planning board does not discuss the transfer of this property. There is no um, teeth, so to speak, in that decision regarding this. Um, the only notes on this is on the A&R plan. There was a note that says parcel C will be deeded to 5 Leonard Street. That the board approves the A&R plan, but they only approve lot line changes. They don't approve notes. So it, there really is no teeth. Did the, did the board even consider that piece of I wasn't it? here then, so I don't know the whole conversation. Okay. Um, I could pull the minutes, I suppose, yep. and, and do that research. But, I mean, Fran was here, Frank was here, I don't know. I don't recall I any wasn't. discussion I wasn't between here. Mr. Barbieri and the, um, Mr. Papa Nicholas mm -hmm. about any side Is agreements. Mr. Barbieri made no mention of it. Yeah, Is I mean, he the I gentleman that came in with the stone wall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, and I know there was like a um, letter, I think a lot of it was done behind the scenes because Mr. Barbieri was looking for support from the neighbor for his project. Right. And I think there's an email conversation back and forth that was attached to this letter. So I think a lot of that happened and now I think Mr. Papa Nicholas is feeling like, you know, like I gave him my support. I may not have done that if this right. Didn't, right. wasn't going right. to happen. So I told Mr. Papa Nicholas that, you know, the board doesn't have a whole lot of ground here. But that I would give you his letter, I would 
explain the situation to the newer board members and see if the board had any thought about maybe asking Mr. Barbieri to come in and say, why don't you be a good neighbor and, and do what you said you were going to do um, and see how far that gets us. I mean, it can't hurt, I suppose. And you just did give him something for nothing. So, so, so. how big is this parcel C? Is it in question right in the garage? Is on it? Top of my is head. it just the garage itself, it's a, pretty much? Yeah, it's, it's small. Garage. Yeah, it's really much just the garage. Okay. It's, it's attached to the water. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm in favor of having Mr. Barbieri come in front of this body and explain. Sure. You know why is this still an issue? And and there was some things done in good faith at the time, and and apparently something's changed. Um. You know, I think we tried to work with Mr. Barbieri. We, we did a site walk with him. There were a number of concerns by the neighbors, and they seemed to all acquiesce to Mr. <coughs> Barbieri. Bless you. Thank you. I don't know what conversations took place, but um, I would like Bless you. I, I would like to have Thank Mr. You. Barbieri uh, come. That's just my opinion. I'd be open to other I, thoughts. I'd second members. that. Um, as, as someone who went on the site walk, um, I think it was just me and John and Ken. I was there. Were you there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was some discussion about the garage specifically uh, that he was at the very least going to clean it out of every uh, bit of, there was oil and different things. We didn't know what was in there and, and we didn't think it would be fair for the neighbor, Mr. Papa Nicholas, to have to deal with that. And uh, we were told that, oh, if, if he hands the garage over to Mr. Papa Nicholas, it will be totally cleaned out and he'll be responsible for that. Uh, the developer would be responsible for moving all the items from the garage. Um, and that was a major part, from what I remember, it was a major part of uh, that neighbor, Mr. Papa Nicholas, agreeing uh, to uh, the situation as it was. Uh, another thing was the uh, street uh, water it was going to be improved. Yeah. Uh, that couldn't have been, that wasn't worked out um, for, for whatever reasons. And uh, there's a, the neighbor across from Mr. Papa Nicholas also had a similar issue where there's an agreement and uh, it never came to fruition for whatever reasons, and uh, they're both uh, moving. And I feel that we let that neighborhood down. For I don't, I don't know the reasons why they're moving, but um, I feel that we let let that neighborhood down a little bit because uh, obviously people aren't happy that, and they're not happy enough that they're moving. So can we do that, Jenna? Yep. Would you like it so on your next meeting on the thirtieth? So, so can I just? say that um, I struggle a little bit with our, our um, jurisdiction in this situation and I um, if I first of all we can invite him here he's not obligated to come no mm -hmm. um, and we can choose to enter into this um, dispute between the neighbor and the developer behind it but I'm, I'm not sure what role we have and I if they ha if he was coming before us if we had gotten this before he came before us, um, I think that we could have leveraged that conversation a little bit better. So I'm a little bit soft on exactly um, what it is we hope to accomplish. I don't know. I don't know where our jurisdiction is. I don't know what we can say. I mean, if we wanted to just tell him that we're disappointed, we globally, the planning board, we could put together a letter, I guess. But I don't. I don't know what we're going to ask of him. He doesn't have to come. Right, and then also in your in this letter, Mr. Papa Nicholas asked that he be informed of any meeting so that he may be res represented. So he would likely attend as well, and that could turn into. Yeah. I just don't know what. what no, no that's not of our purview. Yeah. This is not a this is not a discussion for for, the, for an argument to occur. I would like Mr. Barbie. This is my opinion. Yeah. I'd like him to come and explain to this board why this issue kind of unfolded the way that it did. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Not that we, we, to your point, we don't have any teeth with it, but uh, you know, I'd like to kind of send this message to Mr. Barbieri that you know, we as a board consider the fact that you know, people of the town are impacted. He's not a individual that lives in this town, and I would just like to understand that and for the record that we hear it out. Okay. I agree. That's a good point, Marilyn. I, I, no, and and I to Fran's can't. point, I think we just yeah. have to play it the right way, but I think it should happen and hear, yep. hear what he has to say. And okay. if it makes my perspective, it makes Muriel feel any better, is that it's a project that's still not completed. And uh, in my view, <coughs> there's been three similar incidents that have happened around this problem, around this project. And uh, I'd like to, you know, have some light shed on it and 
the very least. Can I just ask, will the demolition permit for the shed be held until? Uh, uh, we don't have any control over that. Okay. That's a building But permit. Mr. Papanichols could file a zoning, a ZBA? That's between. Complaint if he would like. Yep. Okay. And that could, all right. Yeah, it's not about me feeling better. I mean, I don't, okay. I don't uh, you know, whatever. I just don't understand it. I don't really see um, our, a clear objective. Um, I wish I wish that we had had this letter prior to acting on his request at our last meeting. Yeah, I actually um, I'm in agreement with Muriel, although I, I I like what you're saying, Fran, but it is a little after the fact kind of scenario, and I don't know, you know. First of all, he's like, like Muriel said, he's not obligated to come. He's not obligated to come, but if he but he wants to come in from this board at a future date, keep something like this in mind. Right? Agreed, but. I mean, what are we going to do? We're just going to scold him publicly? I mean, is that... Well, who, no, who, I'm who just saying, like, what, what, what is him? the purpose, really? I mean... I think we want to hear the reasons why yeah. he backed out of his agreement. That's all. And I, but, I but think it's just a follow-up. So we're going to hear the reasons why, but... We have no action items. But we're not going to... There would be no action on our part. We, it's not an agreement with this board, right? We're right. entering into an agreement that he has independently with size. So uh, this is the last I'm going to say on it. I'll go with the board, yeah. whatever we decide. <laughs> but it, it's a, it's not really our jurisdiction. Our, it, it's just not our problem to solve, yeah, unfortunately. I agree. I think, I think it's not our problem to solve. Ha I'm not here to... I'm not solving the problem. I'm here to kind of... I would like to hear Mr. Barbieri's... Um, understanding of the situation but, but why we can't, we can't affect are. anything as it relates to this particular scenario and had we like, like you said had we known this prior to the time we came before the board we could have obviously put more pressure and been a little handled things a little bit differently but it's too late well if i may maybe correct or update my statement to muriel's uh, if I could address your concerns, maybe should be a, a better way of approaching this. Um, this is a, we've voted on this uh, based on information that was in front of us then. And, um, and we have heard some problems since. Uh, and it would have <laughs> been timelier if we had gotten this letter, but it is what it is. And, I think we do have a responsibility for something we've approved that has some problems that are being noted to have them, Mr. Barbieri, have a chance to explain, to shed some light on it uh, because we spent a lot of time on this and if these people made a, agreements with Mr. Barbieri and then those weren't followed through on, uh, then I'd like to know more facts about it and if he can shed some light on it that'd be great there's obviously some disagreements so i think we should just vote at the end but i mean i'm, I'm taking miro's import input at value because it kind of level sets now and i think if we do have this meeting which i think we should we should just clearly state at the beginning that we don't have any jurisdiction we just wanted to get two parties here together you know to see if a quick and easy solution could be resolved but beyond that we can't do anything else well, I, would, I, I think it, i'm sorry importantly for the members that were on the board for the decision you did at least consider that you did know about that transaction that was supposed to transpire you were told that it would happen whether or not it was part of the and uh, no i wasn't told that it was going no. to happen I wasn't here. Then. You weren't right. here. So there was, there was nothing of the discussion that there was an agreement between Mr. Barber. Well, but she it, said there was notes was on a, the It was a no, but they, I mean, do you read the notes on the annual uh, plans? No, I mean, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, the notes say lots of different things. So, I mean, I, I don't fault them for not knowing right, that okay. piece of it. If it was not made part of the subdivision decision, I would argue that they did not know about okay. it. Sorry, because I, thought I it would was, imagine they would have made it part of the decision. I, if, I misunderstood. I thought notes were added at the when we were signing the A and R. They, they were there before. No, no, no they were just part them. of the like you know. There's always like a right, series right, of right. notes. My, so my only just to David's point, would, I would just hesitate to, to <clears throat> put you guys as mediators between the two parties. That's my right, only right. thought. Like you he said, get Judy? the two parties in the same room to see if we can come to a quick resolution. Mm -hmm. Like that's not your role that, here. That, that, and that's outside of the scope of what I wanted. This is a civil dispute Barney. between right. the right. two parties, and I just. And he's looking for some help from the town, but I'm not sure that we're in that 
and I know what you want to do, and I think that that's fine to bring him right. in, and Papa Nix will probably show up, but I just want to make sure that we're clear that we don't, the board doesn't. So we should not middle. allow Papa Nicholas to speak. So it's not what we're saying, hearing, right? Right. It's not a public it's not hearing. A public right. Hearing. right. Okay. You could have Mr. Barbieri yep. speak. Yep. Thank you very much, sir. Have a nice day. Have a okay. good day. Yep. Period. And stop. Okay. So I think you know we should probably vote as a, as a group on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there a motion to have Mr. Barbieri come in front of this board and explain the situation on the Box Street property? Box Mill Road. Thank you. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor of having Mr. Barbier appear, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Aye. To oppose, abstain. Motion carries three so to two. Would you like him to come October 30th? If, uh, if, if he would like. <laughs> I will invite we'll him invite for him, October right? 30th. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have okay. time on the, the meeting on the 30th? Well, that's the one where we. <laughs> Right now, the only thing well, we're doing a bunch of administrative stuff and Golden Pond. That's it. I don't know that we're going to have time for much else. So, if, if our next hearing gets continued, it might have to get continued to November. I would think probably more likely the November. Was it the 15th? For which one? For the next hearing, or for Barbieri? Barbieri. Yeah. Barbieri. So, well, that one's falling off quick too. Could so. I ask for the vote again, please? It was. Uh, all those Muriel, Muriel and Kelly, Kelly and I and Muriel, said no. Everybody yeah. else is a yes, I think. Right. Yes. Okay. Muriel. Four yes. And Kelly. And Kelly. You were against. Those two. Yes. Okay. Against. And yes. the rest was in favor. Right. Okay. So Barbieri on the 13th. Yes. Was there a specific time? Um. <laughs> well, it's not a public hearing. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to invite him in any show. I'll put him on it at 7:30 and give him 15 minutes. Do we need a five-minute break or no? I need a five-minute break we right do. now. Five <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> I think we need to do that because we're past 8.35. Yeah. Right. We were oh, yeah, we should open it. Yeah. Right. So is there a motion to I delay the public hearing? Open the public oh, hearing. Well, I was going to, I guess, open and it then, and then we'll delay it. Yes. Okay. Technically, right. open the public hearing? Yes, yeah, so I'll make that motion. Second. Made a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Stay delay or say negative. For five minutes. Five minutes. Right. All right. All right. Five minutes. You know. Well, I think they're. I think they're out there. Oh. Yeah. I'm saw, sure that they probably are. I saw. Them. Oh, I saw okay. uh, oh, peeking in. I saw one of them. Well, yeah, that's what I was wondering. And conservation's over at the senior center. Is yes, that what that means? and it's the same time, by the way. Yeah, I, we need to. Yeah, we need to have better. I feel like we're on break, but can we talk about that when we're not on break? Uh, trying to the trying timing? to make sure the coordination. We, yes. Yeah. And this came up Saturday so, especially too. Especially something like this. You know. I, I don't disagree. I, yeah. Especially with the longest. I need to. It's a little awkward with that. It is awkward. Can I ask you a parking lot question? You can. Doesn't mean I'm gonna answer. <laughs> you know the new nets. Correct, yeah. They really don't work well. Oh, it's well, still they, recording. They're, 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 they're still recording. You want me to shut off the recording no, during this break? Yeah, let's shut it off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Shut it off. Oh, somebody's sarcastic anymore. <laughs>
He's Fran. I'm Frank. Frank, Fran, it all <laughs> kind of works out. Or my grandmother might call me Fran. Francis. Francis. Yeah, right. um, so we will, uh, do I need to reopen the public hearing, Jennifer? Um, yeah. I'll move to open, reopen the public hearing. All right. I'll second. Uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. All those opposed, abstain. We are now open. Uh, this is for the public hearing for uh, 147 Lumber Street. Um, I will pick up, so just kind of a recap. Uh, at the last meeting, the applicant came in front of this body, uh, kind of gave an overview and outline of what they were looking to accomplish. Um, we actually started to go through the public hearing outline, which I think all the members, uh, um, or at least there were copies out in the hallway for individuals to take a look at. Uh, I know that there was a concurrent meeting with CONCOM at this time. Uh, I believe they're, are they finished, Bill? Uh, they're almost finished. Okay, because Phil was there, so. Can we jump in and just, um, just as we, I know that as a board, we can't decide when other boards schedule their meetings, and I don't suggest that. But as we continue hearings, can we ask the applicants to be mindful of the fact that the public can't be in two places, so when they are scheduling um, their subsequent hearings that we don't have the planning board and the CONCOM, um, scheduled at the same time or the same night even, just w until we don't have this situation being in two different locations. Is that something we can just put into our? I, I'd agree with that. I, I brought it up before. Um, we should maybe even take the lead as a planning board, uh, having our meetings off schedule of the Conservation Commission's meetings because oftentimes projects need to be coordinated between the boards. And if everything's happening at once, like tonight, it makes it very difficult for the neighbors and the developers. Yeah, right. And I would like to say it was voiced to me by um, some of the neighbors who wanted to attend this meeting. Um, they were very concerned, obviously, because they couldn't get to both. So I think it is, it is a big, um, it's a big concern when we have, especially a project of this magnitude that that so many people are interested in, um, when we have overlap and. No, I don't know what, what we can do. Um, yeah, I mean, the <laughs> only thing I can say to that is you guys are the ones that continue the hearings. The applicants are the ones that accept the continuations. Uh, I don't, it, it, it's, it's not really well, that I, no, much that I can yeah. do No, I that. actually was sort of more asking the board if in this interim period when we're outside of the town hall, when we have this situation where we can't be co-located in adjoining rooms or adjoining floors, if we, when we continue and we just ask the applicant to help us because they're the ones that are, are really, you know, more affected and in, in control of their scheduling like to help us and not co-schedule um, hearings where the public would be interested in both pieces. And, and to Frank's point, I mean, I have no problem trying to work and do scheduling opposite Mondays of planning of conservation. The problem is becoming, it's Mondays, it's tough, especially this time of year. With There's holidays. so many Monday holidays, Jewish holidays, like different mm -hmm. things that we don't meet on that we're going to end up meeting some of the same nights. It's just right. inevitable. So right. unless you want to think about a different meeting night, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what yeah, to say. I was say. just going to ask, are we married to Mondays? You're not married. I mean, right. that's, it's your call. If, you, if the board likes a different night, then... That's, a, that's another option too, but. We, we really would need John's input yeah. as chair, any, anyhow, right. but he would work with um, Jeff. Um, to figure out. To work, yeah. yeah. I agree, that's so noted on that. Um, <clears throat> I was going to go through the outline as we'd stated so far, but it may make sense also, uh, we left off on number four, the beta group review. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer, that's checked off, but um, I may like to have Phil just provide a quick recap sure. um, from your findings and anything like that, Phil, and then we can uh, probably open it up to the applicant um, to be able to kind of respond and get just level set, and then we'll get back on the on the agenda here, and hopefully by those two uh, series of comments, it'll give the folks that are at ConCon maybe a little bit more time to to get here as well. So, Phil? Excellent. Uh, for the record, Phil Paradis with Beta Group. We've been uh, reviewing this project for both the Conservation Commission and the uh, Planning Board, and I second the idea of not meeting at the same time. <laughs> 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 Makes it yeah. a little easier for me. 
Um, so subsequent to our last meeting, uh, the applicant has provided supplemental in our revised uh, documents to address a lot of the comments that we had. Uh, and there was a, a little bit of back and forth. But uh, substantially, they've, they've addressed, uh, and we've come to a consensus on the, the model as it relates to stormwater management. Uh, and and uh, a, a, a number of the issues uh, uh, relative to the design. Uh, so that, so there's, uh, and, and the conservation right now is debating the, the issue uh, of, of water getting to the potential vernal pool and make sure that's maintained. So that I think there's gonna be some monitoring as part of the, if, if in fact the conservation issue is in order of conditions. Um, so I don't think we have to worry about that. The, 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 the biggest outstanding issue that, that uh, I think the board has to weigh in on at, is, is the issue of the 75 foot buffer zone uh, that's required for a non-residential use within a, a residential district. Um, there are some, some other issues relative to requiring maybe that, that could be conditioned uh, and is likely to be conditioned with the Conservation Commission relative to inf uh, soil testing for the stormwater basins, um, monitor, you know, observing the, the, the soils. There's a few that are some, some housekeeping things relative to um, erosion control barriers being consistent on the plans. Um, I think that's it. So I think that the applicant has addressed, <coughs> like the majority, I think the buffer zone issue is the biggest thing. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. Any questions for Phil while you have him on the, on the uh, lectern or at the microphone? Um, yes. Uh, your suggestion about the buffer zone, it's concerning just the wetland or? Uh, no. And, the buffer zone, I think the Z1 comment in my, in my letter uh, reflects what your, what your bylaw states uh, relative to the, um, relative to a non-residential use within a residential district or agricultural district requires a, a, a buffer zone. Okay. For an agricultural district, it's 75 feet wide. Uh, and so, the, but the board has the um, has a, the, the applicant app can ask the board for finding that that a, a, a what, what I would say a substitute screening and or a pro, you know provision is is acceptable. Thank you. Any other questions for Phil? So again, I'm not gonna stick right to the outline right here, but um, it might be a good opportunity for the applicant, just if they have any comments uh, from Phil's um, feedback there, or anything else they'd like to update us on that's been presented, information that's re been presented to the board or made available to the public. So, anything? You can go to the mic and... I'm John Benzie with Beals and Thomas. It's Tom Micklack also with Beals and Thomas. We're both professional engineers uh, working on this project. With regards to the screening that, that's been raised, we certainly recognize that, that concern of the abutters that are out there. And one of the commitments, and whether or not the, the board will accept additional information at this time, but it is a commitment um, that the applicant has agreed to along the abutting property where the, the neighbors are install a uh, 500 foot length of arborvitae plantings and this is just roughly outlined on this plan that's just put up here in green um, and that planting will be along that eastern edge adjacent to the wetland resource area that will provide um, some additional screening in addition to the the woods that are there between the actual residences and the solar field and this will provide a, a lower screening. The, um, the actual solar cells and uh, units there are not that high. And granted, immediately when these are planted, they probably won't be 10 or 12 feet high. 
but over the period of a few years, these arborvitaes uh, will grow much denser and will provide some additional low-level screening in there to supplement the existing wooded areas in there. We have prepared some cross sections uh, as well to be used. And actually, Tom, if you can, do we have both that and the plan view, or is the plan view on the opposite side? Oh, there's the plan view. Okay, so that just so you can hold the, the two together there. Uh, the sections show where we've taken uh, cross sections and plan views from four of the residences there along uh, the abutting property to the east. And it shows at a one-to-one -one horizontal and vertical scale what the view is from the ground level. And it may be difficult for the board at, at this distance um, to see that, but the sight of the eye uh, looking through the woods and at the solar fields extending up the so hill. Point of clarification from the top address to the bottom, can you say, I'm assuming that's uh, 18, 20, 22, 24? Uh, are those the correct numbers? I, I don't well, have them memorized. The address is on it, but it's now formally uh, Seward, Hagberg, Lind, and Lowell. So, so it is four, four consecutive addresses. Yes. Yes, yes that's correct. Okay. And what this doesn't show up here is that line that was just up previously, which is the additional plantings of the arborvitaes there, that would be essentially, there's a fence line very small at, at the eastern end. There'd be additional the, the arborvitaes in there that provide that screening. To do that. So two things on that. Jennifer, can we allow this at this point? Because this was not in our <coughs> packet. So you have a policy of not accepting the information. Um, I mean, you can accept it. For review for the next hearing, I suppose. The arborvitae but screening yeah, yeah, is yeah, what you're speaking exactly. to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, I would say you could accept it as information for review. I mean, the board hasn't had an opportunity to look at this. Public has not had an opportunity to see any of this. Okay. So I mean. Uh, uh, so just no on decision that, will be yeah. made on this. Tonight. Yeah, to right. that point, I appreciate the addition of the screening at, in you know in response to the walk that we had and so forth. Um, but I also know that um, at least a couple people on the walk weren't overly thrill thrilled with arborvitae. So this is not necessarily my feedback, but um, I think that people will, will welcome the addition of intentional added screening. Uh, but I think that they would also welcome the opportunity to. Um, have some input on it too. So I, I appreciate the addition. I really do. Muriel, I, did you make a point before that the people are here? You said that to me. So this What's that? Speaking for other people, didn't we have that point made before? We were on the sidewalk, but we were quite clear that people should come to this meeting. Yes. Right. Yes. That's fine. So may I ask questions? These are these are letters from. Um, mm -hmm. We're, I'm not quite there yet on well, the letters. I, specific to the arborvitae. That's a, okay, so no? I'll allow okay. it. All right, so I'll I do have specific. Um, uh, there, was, uh, there was statements that it would take several growing seasons. We do have um, neighbors asking specifically, how long will it take the arborvitae to reach a height that screens it so that they're not seeing it? They don't want to hear several growing seasons. They want to know how long does it take the arborvitae to reach the height that's going to keep it, um, you know, not not visible from their from their windows. Uh, from their windows, that you know will be very difficult. I mean, arbor bites don't grow thick up to <coughs> an extremely high level. There will be some visibility of this field, you know, unless a, unless a wall is put up there up up at the, the highest levels. So to, to Muriel's point, I think that they would like to have some input as to what the screening might be. If the screening is not going to prevent them from seeing um, the array, then they're not going to be happy with the arborvitae, um, number one. Number two, they had questions about um, what is the ongoing plan to if the arborvitae should die, if they should get eaten by wildlife, and what is the ongoing plan to replenish um, the screening so that it doesn't become an issue in the future? Hi, uh, Rich Kleiman uh, with the uh, CEC team. Um, just a couple notes on the arborvitae. These are the proposed plantings are what they call green giants. So they're a very um, fast growing and they grow wide and they grow tall uh, and they grow about two feet a year. And so if you start with a plant that's say in the 
six foot range. Um, it's already fairly tall, and the, the panels are the top of the very top of the panels are only ten feet, and then the low end is about three feet. So, and the, and you're looking at the edge of them. So these will grow quite wide, fill in quite rapidly over let's say the first growing season, and then thicken up even more over the next two or three years, and they'll get taller. So they're 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 the the bigger kind, the more aggressive kind. They grow very quickly, uh, and they quickly fill in. And, and it's to supplement the already 300 plus mm -hmm. or minus feet of woodland that's already in between these two. So, so uh, for the areas. for the array that's on the hill, yes. um, how is that? You're saying yeah. it's a 10 foot array, but if it's on a hill, obviously it's going to be much higher than 10 feet. Right. So. Well, you you were on the walk, so I you remember there are certain vantages where um, you really couldn't see the houses even because of the way the topography mm -hmm. was. But this this. Arborvitae was meant to supplement that that one area in, in the middle where you had a bit of a more of a vantage due to the topography, and mm -hmm. we were trying to do what we could to uh, to soften that and mitigate it as much as possible. Um, I mean, there's only so many things you could do there. But the other question you had about the, about the if if if, if they die, if if a plant dies, Arborvitae dies, these come with a guarantee from the um, the installer, the nursery, went, and, and you have at least a one year guarantee if some die they get replaced uh, within that year, and sometimes that's an even longer guarantee. So uh, I think there's a commitment to make sure that these, these stay alive and grow and healthy and, and fill in, and, um, and I think it, it, was, it was really just an attempt to, to listen to what we heard during the walk, even though there were many vantages where you really would struggle to even see the panels, there were some where we realized you'd have some view, and this was an attempt to try and address that as best we could. So the, the arbor values, would they be on the outside of the fencing? They basically are right at the, at the, at the fence. Yes, on the outside. On the outside. Yeah. And and right, outside the fence. Outside right. the fence. And, and I would just also point out that uh, this particular type of arborvitae is deer resistant. That's so right. we've used it successfully it's, uh, I do have, throughout the state. I've, I've lost a bunch of arborvitae because of the deer, so I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> so we're talking three feet, six feet away from the fence. Is there a certain delineation, or has that not been? Um, I, I don't believe it's actually been thought through. I think the bottom line was that is a, you know, whether an arborist or a landscape architect will say based upon the growth of these, you don't want it growing into the fence, so we probably put it back about five or six feet. Just to provide some context. Uh, through the chair, um, yes. one of the neighbors has showed up now from 22. Can you point out on this graph uh, where her property is and how uh, the view is now affected by what you're talking about with Arbor Day? Number 22, uh, the name, actually, because on this plan we don't have the house number, but it's the now formerly the landowner. I, I, okay. Hold that up. Um, would be the second section, so, so that would be here. So we're looking northerly along the array, and there's the property Hadberg. You know, this is where, you know, this is the existing or proposed buffer. Mm -hmm. There's the fence, which will be supplemented with our variety, as we just discussed. And this shows the panels basically following um, the topography. And, and the dotted line indicates the side of uh, top of the trees from the round. Correct. That's, that's the intent. Yeah, it's a little difficult to see, understandably, but there's a little six-foot <laughs> little man standing at the edge of the... Um, Section. Oh, I now see that. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Chair. Please. Do, do you happen to know the type of arbor variety that you'll use that's deer resistant? It's called the green giant. Green, oh, that's okay. Thank you. you familiar with the green giant? I am not. Can I, but I have it, seen the damage like you have from our right. Is it feasible to ask for on that? So you're showing us the sight line from the ground. Is that correct? That's correct. Is Six it, feet off the ground. Right. Is it feasible for you to show us the sight line from the second story, second floor on these homes? Well, it's... I, I don't want to say that the arborvitae and the tree cover won't, won't help with the second story, but it's, it's nearly impossible to, to completely build a wall that would screen every view from everyone's yeah. second story. Um, some of the houses won't see anything. Some will have a view through the forest and see a limited number of panels. Uh, I think we're just trying to do what 
we can reasonably do without you know erecting some kind of a big wall or, 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 or other structure that's really not feasible. Um, but we I think we've tried to address that as much as possible. And I, I think the standard under the bylaw is, is, is one of reasonableness, reasonable amount of screening, making best efforts, and I think we are trying to, to address it in that way. Right, and I'm, I'm not implying no, that okay. you're not. I'm sorry. I just, that is a, it is a, a major concern, obviously, from the homeowners about what they're going to see going from a fully wooded view uh, to a very different view. So it's just I feel it's my duty to ask the question and just uh, try to get the answer. Anything else? Any other I mean, we certainly could show that line. The, the, the sections that we have here have elevations along the, the, the sides, the y-axis. So you can see that at the ground level at a certain place, it may say, for example, elevation. I'll just throw out a number, 200. So if you had 208 or uh, you know, 212, you might be at the floor level of the, of the second floor. And if you go up to 224, you would be at the, uh, the upper level. So that would be how you could certainly see what a higher story cross section would look like, view line. Very good. Any other questions from the planning board regarding specifically the arborvitaes and the material that was provided this evening? Can we go back to the previous chart showing the four homes that are uh, abutters? Uh, is, it the diff is the other one? The no. Color? The other side. Are the arbor Oh, the arbor Yeah. The green line? There yes. You go. Uh, can you put on the, on the easel so we can show uh, the home audience? Can you uh, show with the ruler the buffer zone for the solar panel side of the buffer and for the homeowner side of the buffer? Which buffer? If, if you have them deline delineated here. Uh, well, first, can you show us the edge of the wetland buffer zone? Well, here's the 100 foot, which the, um, you know, you have the 50 foot, which we tried to, you know, obviously maintain for our limit of work. Mm -hmm. So here's the 50 foot buffer, you know, the, the side facing the array. We didn't delineate anything on the abutter side. Oh, I see. So it's just everything facing the array is where we have our respective buffer zones, the 100, the 75, 50. So what is the other green line with the side dashes? This one over here is the BBW. Can you explain what that yeah, is? Yeah, what does it mean? The vegetated wetlands. So that, that's the wetland, that's the resource area line. And this, this is at a 1 to 40 scale, so you know, you might be losing something. And, and the vegetated wetlands are on the prop, property of the developer? Correct. Did you have a question about the other side? Well, I was I was hoping that this chart showed. It was the first time I'm seeing it, and the colors kind of got me uh, thinking along these lines. But we don't see where the buffer zone is on the other side of the wetland. So um, we haven't actually we didn't flag the the eastern side of the wetland. We flagged the western side of the wetland because that's the side that's facing our work. Exactly sure. how far over the wetland goes, whether the bordering vegetated wetland or BBW actually extends onto the abutting properties or is the other side of the wetland on, on our particular site. We're not sure exactly where it is because uh, we, haven't, we haven't mapped it and are required to the commission when that concerned with that other side. Grant, Thank you. Uh, Can I help? I have a question. Um, Amy? So the arborvitae line is 500 feet. Can I ask why it doesn't extend all the way to the, the end of the rays at the top there? Yeah, the reason was uh, when we walked the site, we had um, four po three posts uh, set by the surveyors that showed um, where the edge of the panels would be, and um, the members of the uh, the residents, uh, the the, res the neighbors, <laughs> and uh, the members of the planning board that attended uh, looked from each of those vantages, and because of the topography and the, the distance and the width of the woods. From that northern area, you, you really you, you couldn't see anything, uh, any houses readily through through the woods from that vantage. Similarly, on the southern uh, post, it was it was the same situation. It was really that middle section that had a, a, some semblance of visibility, um, just just given the topography and the, and the way the woods are there. So that was the rationale for screening that middle part because there was really no 
no view to screen in those other areas. Okay, I just I thought I could see the houses yeah. from most of the places where we walked. I, so I, I want, would like to hear from the neighbors on that later when. During yeah, the and I would like to actually. We were just talking about that, Frank and I. I do recall from that corner, the farthest. Yes, we were absolutely able to see our neighbor, well, the neighbors' house, houses. I was thinking of the lower right corner where the. The first. Where is the first uh, mark that we walked out to? This the, is the, the top. The top. The top. Yeah. Top. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah, so we could see the uh, the Hagberg's house from that from that particular spot. Right. And, and that and that's covered. And, and that Aberbody uh, roll of the Aberbody was so, screened. Uh, no. So. Did we walk all the way out to the farthest corner? We did walk yes. to the farthest yes. corner. Yes. That's where we started. And yes, and that's so we could see neighbors' houses from that farthest corner, is my point. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Amy? Yeah. I, that's my memory, yes. too. I, I agree. But also the southeast, the lower corner as well. We didn't uh, go right. to the very far no, we did not. We didn't go to the very bottom. I don't think. No. Right. No, we stopped at Correct. this point. Correct. Yes. But we did start at the very So do we go farther south than where the Arbor Light, Arbor Vitae line is going to a stop? A little bit, I think, yeah. It feels I like, think we did. Yeah, yes, we, we a little bit farther south further than south. that. Okay. Uh, we, excuse okay. me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we, we did actually end up at the very southerly part. When, where we exited at the end, that was the southern extent of the array. Of that array? Yeah, just so okay. to clarify that. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you. There was you. no stake at that point. There wasn't a stake. Okay. We okay. South okay. of that okay. stake. Were to I was going to say, we must go a little bit farther. So some of us, I think, walked out that way. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions by board members regarding the Arbor Vitae's or this information? No, I just want to say again that I appreciate the extra effort to add screening in response to what we saw when we were out there. Um, and I am interested in hearing um, the abutting neighbors, how they feel about it. Yeah, I would, I would concur with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to agree with Muriel and also state that while we do prefer things in advance, this isn't a response to something that we just were on a site walk on Saturday, which was a public notified meeting. So that's, and that's fair, right? Yep. And it will be added to the record and we'll yep. bring it up at the yep. next meeting. Yep. So we do want to thank everybody. Um, I am going to kind of put in here, not right yet, but the site visit and gather any feedback from board members um, from that visit as well as and Jennifer I don't know if I can do it or not mm -hmm. invite um, any comments from um, members of the public that actually you're the acting chair you can do whatever you want <laughs> this is America and you're the chairman not the case uh, but <laughs> uh, number just don't tell John I said that <laughs> so I'm going to get, get back on the outline here other town department comments Jennifer were there um, any is any I see the chief here the chief is here if you want to start with him I'll try to find the number let's start chief, with the chief chief Slayman Good evening. Um, I've been reviewing the plan. It's um, I have to work with whatever solar project and the type of it's not a, a uh, occupancy per se. So trying to uh, it's a little bit subjective uh, in the building code or where my authority would come in to try to help weigh out. Um, the group has been cooperative. We've kind of applied a standard. Um, driveway philosophy just for general access. They've taken most of the ideas. I think the um, for me to demand access for my ladder truck to be able to get through all the woods fine is probably overkill. So I've kind of pulled back there. But we're just trying to show that there's some structural stability <coughs> to the road, that it could handle an ambulance or some brush fire equipment getting back there. And um, so far, uh, everybody's been cooperative, kind of working with that bylaw and kind of m incorporating it into the project. So that's my uh, real comment right now. Great. Thank you, Chief. No, there was no other comments received from any other departments. Yeah, nothing else out there, no issues. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to check the box on five. Six, adding to the outline, uh, and here is where I will add the site walk um, feedback, um, and I will then open that up. So that's the first part of it. I will open that up to comments from the board as well as members of the public that were on the site walk. And then in addition, if there's any other items that we want to add to the outline, We'll use this forum to to do that as well. 
So I'll first ask members of the planning board who are on the site visit uh, any feedback or comments that we can uh, have open for discussion. And then the second part of that is I'll ask any members, again, of the public that are on the site walk to please come forward and, and state any comments or feedback. All right. Members of the planning board? Mm -hmm. Who are in attendance? Mary Um From the site walk, um, I think w from the site walk, um, any questions I have are, are probably covered in the uh, in the outline as it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I think the outline is going to um, cover any questions that I have specifically from the site walk. I will say I thought the site walk was um, was great. It really gave us a, a good view of the situation, and it really um, you know helped me understand the scope of the project. Um, but as as far as specific questions go, I think we'll cover them as we go. Um, it was great seeing all the neighbors, uh, the developer who is a neighbor as well. Um, the team is uh, was very responsive, I thought, and this fast turnaround from Saturday to today uh, is an example of that, I think. Um, to show a willingness to work with the neighborhood, uh, which is important, I, I feel, for uh, the planning board and uh, outside of any, any project. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, more information and um, uh, what everyone has to say. Any, any thoughts? I think I'd mostly like to hear from the public now, I think. Yeah, I, I do just my a quick comment. I thought that was excellent, I appreciate it. Um, Folks from Thomas and Beale coming out. The applicant also provided some context. I thought that was well done. Thanks for your for your insight. Also, uh, members of the public, uh, appreciate you coming out as well. Uh, we had a great turnout, and I think you know, for myself, just seeing the topography, kind of getting an understanding, really lends itself to some of the items, specifically around uh, stormwater management and the impact that um, potentially this um, project is going to have uh, on that as well. So. Um, at this time, I'd like to open it up to the public. Any comments or thoughts from the site walk or anything that they, they would like to have added to the outline uh, that may not already be covered? Just name and address. Yeah, just name and address as you come up here. And love to hear from you if, if, if anybody's interested. So for clarification, just people that were on the site walk? No, anybody. No, no, it's anybody but this, you know, the site people who have feedback from the site walk is appreciated, but it is open to all members of the public. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Singer, 16 Alexander Road. Uh, my wife, Stacy Spies, was on the site walk. She's unable to be here um, this evening. So we're not one of the abutters, but we are directly across the street. And um, this uh, location is completely within uh, view of our front yard um, and uh, the first floor, and especially the second floor um, of, uh, of our house. And so uh, at this point, from what we've seen um, in terms of the uh, potential additional arborvitae um, and screening, we're not certainly not convinced that there's uh, coverage that will you know block this from from view. Um, I don't know whether you want me to give you know full comment now or wait for you know full comment you know after we're done with this site walk portion. Uh um, I mean, I'd be happy to say, you know, what I want to say right now. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a spot later on for public comment, but if you if there's something that's concise and consolidated, sure, absolutely, sure. So um, my comments will be uh, regarding the um, the bylaws and the approval criteria and such, based upon what was provided in a, a prior um, uh, packet, for, probably from the, from the last meeting. So. Um, so my comments are from myself and also from uh, my wife, Stacy Spies. So we urge you to, um, and thank you, by the way, members of the planning board, we appreciate um, your, your diligence in this matter. Um, we urge you to consider the approval criteria under Article 31, Section 210-203-D2. Based on the information the engineers have provided, the proposed photovoltaic installation does not meet approval criterion two. The installation will be clearly uh, be detrimental to the neighborhood. And with regard to the special permit process, Article 34, Section 210-223.H, the proposed installation as presented is, quote, injurious, noxious, offensive, and detrimental to its neighborhood, uh, end quote, 
and that's due to the extreme visual intrusion into a residential neighborhood. Our concern is, um, is the, the view, which right now is completely wooded, and we don't have uh, per perspective. Um, we don't have uh, a, uh, any type of idea of what the sight lines will look like, whether these proposed, the proposed cover, Arbor Vitae, um, would, would provide cover, would take years and years to provide cover, if, if at all. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other members of the public? Please come on up. Just state your name and address, and the floor is yours. Uh, Tina Rose, 28 Alexander Road. I guess for me, what I'd like to see the planning board do is get some kind of cash bond that would in a year or two they could monitor because we just sat through the whole conservation commission meeting and there is a question of the water the stormwater management there is no model that they can follow to know that the water is going to actually flow where they expect it to because of it coming off of the solar panels and being different than how it is in the forest now and as you know I'm since you did the site walk you know we have water that runs and runs under a our driveway and so our concern is the water running down the hill since we're downhill from it um, that may cause potential problems that they're not sure they can um, solve so if there's some way the planning board could put something aside that maybe in a year or two they if everything goes well they can get back but that they have something set aside to help with that in the event there's a problem very good thank you thank you Tina any other members? See somebody? No? <clears throat> very good. Um, well, members of the public, thank you very much for your <coughs> feedback. Um, I know that this board will take those comments into consideration. We also have emails, Jennifer, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, this isn't the time. There's uh, point number 11 uh, where there's public comment, time for public comment. Uh, so I just want to make note of, for the record, that those comments have been received from, I think, three or four individual members. Three. Three? Yeah. Can I ask one quick question? Um, yes, ma'am. Three plus Je one from the Sportsman's Club. I was just going to oh, say, uh, from, the, from the Sportsman's Club, did, did they give you any indication of when they might get their letter? Um, the reason they're not here tonight is they have a board meeting tonight, so I don't know the answer to that. They might be discussing it tonight. Okay. Just for the public, the Sportsman's Club uh, makes it their practice to send letters to abutting developments about their, their business and the way they operate. So they would like to make sure that they have the opportunity to include their letter in the final process. If, if I may, um, Mr. Please. Chairman. Um, yeah, thank you, and, and I hope they do send a letter. I did uh, have the opportunity to speak with the President, um, Bob Draper, and he, oh. he said that he had shared it with members and that they really had no no issue at all with the plan but that's you know me telling you what he said so mm -hmm. it'd be nice if they would send a letter but if they don't i just wanted you to know we'd had communication with them we actually met with them and previously went over the plans as well but we actually sent them the, the specific site plan by email and then we had a conver two conversations about it after that okay um thank you for that i'm I understand that the letter that they want to include in the record is just to formally notify you about the work, the, the business that they do. Oh, they make it a practice to to notify people formally. I believe so. I believe the landowner is okay with that. He's been living with yeah. them as a neighbor I'm for just, a long time. I'm just saying we got a letter from them. Yes, yeah, about that. So the Sportsman Club has come in front of the board a number of times. Uh, they've always been pleasant to work with. Uh, any other comments, public board members, on number six? So the outline essentially will keep as stated. Um, yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, there he is. Uh, wow. I didn't see him come in. This popped out of nowhere. <laughs> this is like, boom. He's president of the Osborne. Oh, I'll see. board meeting early, and unfortunately, I got nominated as president again. Nice. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back, Bob. I'm sorry to see you out there, but please. Uh, no, no, no. That's, uh, Entirely my fault for not picking this up sooner. Um, matter of fact, at the board meeting tonight, since we had, and we did have this conversation that the gentleman spoke of, um, several members of the board were concerned about two things, and maybe it belongs more to the conservation committee than yourselves, but I did want to bring the point forward. 
and it relates to the flow of water because we have a fairly substantial pond on the mm -hmm. property that is stocked with fish um, in the spring and that's where we do the um, fishing derby with the Hoppington Police Department and it's open to all the kids in, in, um, in Hoppington and to our members. Um, and they asked that I bring up the point that we want to make sure that that water flow to the pond is not interrupted in any manner so that that continues to stay through. And the other one related to the, um, to the passing of the animals. And my understanding, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that the solar panels are arranged so that animals can pass underneath them or around them. Is that, is that correct? There's a fence. There's a fence. Yeah, there's, there'll be a gap under the fence for oh. uh, animals okay. to okay. get under Thank through, you. Uh, okay. through, the, through the array. Uh, and okay. the themselves, even if a, a deer were to get inside there, there's a lot of room in between the, the rows of panels and even under the panels. Because even, even, with the, um, even with that allowance, it's been noted fairly severely on the property with the addition of the apartment complex Modena there beside us and on other construction that the path of the animals through, basically through the town, through our property, is very much disturbed okay. until they reorient themselves and figure out where, where they're going. So um, in order to keep the, the normal flow of wildlife that, that we have, that was the other matter that, that they asked me to bring before you. Um, and from my understanding, that's not going to be a problem, although I don't see a deer crawling under that, under that fence. As you probably know better than I, deer can do all kinds of interesting things well, with that. Yeah, especially but irritate neighbors, <laughs> but. <laughs> but um, I, I like deer there. now. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, uh, but uh, but there, you know, there is room for the smaller animals to get under, and, and the deer could conceivably jump over and, and browse inside, um, inside the fence. So there, there's, there's opportunities for that. Uh, and, uh, uh, but there is also ample space in between the panels. Should they get in there, uh, they should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We were just trying to keep the, 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 the town and the wildlife population kind of moving uh, the, the way it is. It's a fair point, right? And I, and I think given some of the disruption in that area over the past five years, um, the animals are maybe disoriented for a period of time. I don't know why. Well, compared to, compared to years past, for example, with the hunting that's taken place on the property, there were only three deer taken off the property last year. And in years past, there have been a number more than than yeah. that, both with bow and arrow and black powder. Mm -hmm. So I would I would think that deer in particular are going to be a little flummoxed by this this particular uh, project because I I don't necessarily think they're going to choose to go in under the the fence and through it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that that's not the only thing that is interfer no. interfering with this, and I don't, don't, don't intend to say that, uh, but it is part of the overall plan, I, I, I do believe. Uh, the most important one in our members' view is really related to the, uh, to the uh, water flow so that we could uh, continue with our program with the town. That's a good point. It, it can maybe um, Stacy or address kind of from a topography standpoint? what the potential impact, if any, would be on the sportsman's club with the, with the water flow? Actually, I'm not clear exactly where the pond is that you're referring to relative to the development. And Tom here has pulled up a plan. I probably that plan you have there, Tom, at the overall. It's, the, the pond is that close to you. Um, what we're concerned about is the supply of water. Yep. It comes down. There's a okay. small. I could certainly address the supply of water. Yeah. So from our from our site, and it's been discussed uh, quite a bit with the conservation commission. He's more concerned with the supply of water um, in general. So our our site plan here, we're we're trying to the best to to mimic the the current conditions of where the water flows. Since we aren't actually adding impervious areas, the panels are impervious themselves, but the water falls off them, and then that water can flow under the panels adjacent to it or next to it and, and continues. So the, the water supply, we're trying to maintain uh, very closely the, from existing the proposed conditions, um, 
the recharge to groundwater that provides a consistent flow of water to the pond, as well as the surface water runoff during rainfall events. Uh, and we're pretty much mas matching existing versus proposed conditions for that. And uh, another issue typically that comes up here is, is water quality. And since we're not putting any vehicle traffic associated with this and it's, it, it's a clean use, um, we're not going to provide any contaminants, I think, that would impact that in a negative way. So I think this actually is a very good abutting use to the pond in terms of providing a little change to the water supply. Right, and just to make it clear, I mean, here's the, it's a little hard to see, but here's a sportsman's property, and everything, but based on the topography here, everything flows westerly to the resource area at the western edge of the site. Now we have a, a basin proposed here to basically account for the increase in the peak rate of runoff, but you know we we're still basically maintaining drainage flow patterns to where it was going under pre-development conditions. Now everything is running basically parallel uh, on our site, parallel to um, to the Sportsman's Club, based on this topography. It, it seems as though, I don't know if the planning board is, is aware of the fact or, or not, but there's a company called um, um, Valpy that had a chemical spill years in the past over an electronics company. And that chemical plume comes underneath 495 and comes near our property. Okay, so that's another concern for where water goes regarding our property. Uh, there are seven or eight or nine wells the town receives a report every year that Valpy pays for showing where that chemical plume is. And I'm trusting that the conservation board has taken that into consideration. I apologize, did not make one of their meetings that I was supposed to. Um, but it seems as though that the water, your water or this water, is not going to enhance that chemical flow in the direction of the pond or of our property. And the reason I'm concerned about this is because we're sole source water, any well is it. So if that were ever contaminated, we'd be strictly out of, out of luck. Um, so in, in, in any event, I'm trusting that the conservation department has taken that into consideration or that your folks are, are aware of it. Maybe somebody can ask whether that um, chemical plume in any manner would be affected by this. It doesn't seem as though it would be. It seems as though it's on on another side of the property. If, if I may, through the chair. Please, Frank. As a former Conservation Commission member, I'm aware of that. Uh, the state requires Valpy. And the state actually runs the uh, monitoring wells along the west side of Lumber Street on mm -hmm. the west side of your property. And um, it's a plume coming from South Street and underneath 495 and right. it's moving in an <coughs> easterly direction. Yes. And so it is a risk uh, that has to be cleaned up at some point. Um, and it's scary because you, with the chemicals that are in it, you don't want it in your pond. No. Uh, but the uh, water from, from this project, uh, well, that map is a little sideways-ish, but it's going northwest-ish. North and um, I mean, you'd have to ask the Conservation Commission for <coughs> their scientist to have his opinion. But uh, from my understanding, is that uh, two separate sides of uh, property? So. Okay. Well, as as long as you you have a good understanding then of, of what this is, basically. Of the plume, yeah. Right. Okay. And it bothers me every night. Uh, uh, matter of fact, and they just changed testing companies, so that they'll, another company has stepped into the place of GZA to uh, take over from that. Is it the Board of Health that monitors that, I imagine? It's a state that runs the program. They, uh, do they federal, don't report to the Board of Health? It's a federal oversight thing, and the state okay. runs it, and then they report to the Conservation Commission. Would we get a copy, you do. Is it every two years? Every uh, year? No, they have been doing it annually, and they up the number of uh, wells. Okay. Because there had been like two or three, now hopefully there's more. Uh, oh, they're more like seven. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, they've moved further into our property, <coughs> clearly defined the 
It might not be excellent. It might be a response to movement. Yeah, as I drawing, groaned as I said that. Right. Um, I have a question. Your question, Amy? So regarding the 75-foot buffer, um, so normally when these big um, commercial solar projects are in a residential neighborhood, there's a 75-foot buffer. I'm sorry, sorry ma'am. I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry. So normally when these um, commercial solar projects are in a residential area, they have a 75-foot buffer around it. Correct. But they're asking for to do not do that on the sportsman's side because and they because there's no homes there. It would be mm -hmm. alternative screening. So I just want to make sure that the Sportsman Association have an opinion on the, the alternate screening versus the 75 uh, foot buffer? You know, we understood that, with this, that the buffer zone only applies to residential, and since we're not. It applies. It applies to, it applies to everything. So Amy's asking you if you, as an organization, have an opinion on giving them some relief on that or maintaining some, the 75. Some relief. I'd certainly like to see a buffer there, but it doesn't have to be the complete, complete amount. The, can you yeah, but, uh, talk about that and come to a decision? Okay. Uh, it, yes, and I, I'm just pointing you back to the microphone because the folks at home can't hear you if you're not answering at the microphone. I was going to say, but we, we are leaving. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh no, it's we okay. Are, we are leaving native uh, shrub and sapling vegetation in between you and, and the solar, so there's, there's going to be a you know a buffer of native vegetation. What's there now is going to stay. Essentially, that same type of vegetation. Some of the higher trees might be reduced, but. It, but basically, what's there now is that that type of vegetation yes, is going to stay. Yeah. Okay, so that that will pretty much stay the way it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> uh, that's that's all for me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Through the chair, yes. uh, Fran. I, I just thought of an item that I'd like to add to the outline. If we please, Kelly. It. Absolutely. Uh, I'd like to add safety uh, safety discussion. All right. I have I have a few questions. So we'll add safety. See where I'm at. I'll add it. Jennifer, let's figure out where we want to add safety. We need to have that added to the uh, <coughs> H. 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 No renumbering involved. H. H. I mean, unless it, I mean, what kind of safety? Like, like um, public safety? Like, yeah, public safety. Like, so fire and police public safety? Or? No, no. People well, safety. People safety. <laughs> people safety. I mean, I think that's probably its own item. Under H. Yeah, no. I couldn't see All where right. it would fit in. We'll make it number H. I um, want to add at least a discussion on the board about getting the clarification on the zoning. It may or may not be a question, but I at least want to discuss it as a board. Well, it's zoning. not the zoning. So the, the, the non-conforming access. access, I thank you for <laughs> keeping me out of trouble. Um, just making sure that the non-conforming access that the town did you know uh, request the owner of the property to put in for his residence my only, my, my only suggestion of that is if you're gonna have that discussion you should have it tonight because yes if you need a legal opinion that's gonna yes. take some time all right thank you so given the fact it's 9 36 uh, that might be one of the things we want to address before this group adjourns for the evening perfect all right so before we kind of do that, in non-conforming, uh, Jennifer, will that be number 7i, or would that be its own? I thought 7i was safety, and you guys were saying H. G, F, G, H. H Maybe H after? is safety. Yes. Call this. You want well, to call it? I mean, I'm not going to okay. add it to that one if we're going to discuss it right I now. I was just going to say, right. I, almost don't I, don't, I almost don't think it. I just want to. Just so it's covered, and it's yeah. going to be placed in here. Yeah, you have a different call it I. Line. That's fine. Right. I have a lot of online, so. so we're going to add it as I. We'll have the discussion now on non-conforming access. Mm -hmm. right. yes. just, uh, just maybe, if I may, uh, add something to that. Uh, we, there was a zoning review uh, that, that Beta performed and um, found that as for the solar project oh. that it met the uh, it met the standards of the bylaw with regard to frontage and access and that kind of thing. The, there was a. Uh, uh, Nonconformance with the residential construction, but that was taken care of, I think, by the Board of Appeals. So, I we don't think there's a conflict, but um, just wanted to point out we don't think there's any conflict under the zoning part of the bylaw, or the solar part of the bylaw for a solar project at this site. 
So mm -hmm. my, my only question, I don't know that there is a conflict or not, so I don't want to suggest that I, I, I have the answer. Um, I just want to ask the town attorney to, um, to clarify that we don't have a zoning issue where the, um, the access point is over an existing non-conforming access point for the residential dwelling, and it's the same access point that will be used for the um, commercial use, the solar farm. I just I, I would like to make sure that we get this clear through the town town attorney that so it is. What, what are you specifically asking? The access the not using the non-conforming access point that the dwelling uses and was approved to use. Um, that's the same access that the commercial site intends to use, mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure that that is appropriate under the um, under the uh, By the bylaws, the conditions of the. Well, access. Let me hear it, Jennifer. No, I was just, I mean, in previous projects, we have allowed solar projects to use the same access as a residential dwelling without issue. Have they been conforming? They've been conforming, okay. so that, but technically, once the Board of Appeals issues a variance, it's conforming. <laughs> so, <laughs> for a residential use. I don't, I don't mean well, to. For, it's for a residential use. For any, it is. For any I use just, that's allowed I, on that site. I, you know what? Any I don't use that's allowed argue. on that site. Right. And this I, is an allowed use on that site. I want to. I just would like to personally. I served on the board of appeals mm -hmm. for a little while. I would like to make sure that we are not um, tangling ourselves up from a zoning uh, perspective. Is that something that could be done by town council? I'm sure it can be. When I don't know, but I'm sure. It can. I mean, I'll send it out tomorrow, but... I think the applicant would probably like to get moving on this, would be my guess. So if that's something that is being requested... Yep. Um, well, I mean, the, it's the planning the, board has to take a vote yeah, to send the it board, to town if council. If the board is, is you know... I, if, it may be just me that has that question, but the, yeah, I want to ask him. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if it's appropriate to address that question through the planning staff and, and Jennifer and Elaine. Chair. Uh, could, could possibly get you a, a clear answer based on other precedents. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you're not having to go to council. I, I, I would say, I was going to say what Jennifer <coughs> said about previous projects uh, having not been a problem, specifically on Hayden Row, um, which probably happened before you were on the board, definitely happened before you were on the board. Um, and I would, I would think that if this was a, a specific question, the time for it would have been when they presented the idea where, how it was at the beginning, Lumber Street, the front driveway, and uh, how the property is situated. Um, but I, I'm pretty confident uh, in Jen Jennifer's answer, 100% um, confident in it, that it's uh, within the bylaws uh, as they're provided um, and as they're written for our town and from the state, that it that it's so just to make a point through you, Mr. Chairman, it's a non-conforming use, and I'm not sure how anybody has um, absolute confidence if they're not an attorney that is knowledgeable in this that that we can we can use a non-conforming use for another kind of use. I I, I don't know the, that that is true. If I could if I could respond, please. Um, as Jennifer stated, it's uh, it's an, the driveway itself is approved and if you like to think about it as a way that it's grandfathered it's it's there it's a driveway it's a house it's a property um, on that property now there's additional property and uh, these solar panels the driveway is the same driveway the house is the same house uh, the solar panels are, are what's new uh, but the driveway is the same driveway it's a use that we're adding to that property. It, it makes but a difference. Every, from a every solar project is a... Right. right. I'm just, it's, it, it makes a change. It, it changes the... No, 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 no. Right. But it doesn't so, change okay. the property. Okay. Okay. Could I ask so, a clarifying? Wait, hold on. Last question, and then I do want to... The public has a comment on this one, on a particular issue, but let me go Amy first, and then we'll go to the public comment, and then I want to wrap this up with a vote. I just wanted to clarify that the zone that, the, that this address where the driveway is in, it, that solar panels are allowed... By right. Solar pa there. panels are allowed in any zoning okay. district in town with a special permit by the board planning board. Okay. Okay. Uh, comment from the public, please, ma'am. Is it uh, Tina? Uh, Tina Rose, 28 Alexander Road. 
Having served eight years on the Zoning Board of Appeals, I have a similar question to Muriel. I think when you, when they've gotten permitted as a non-conforming, it is a question that should be answered. Um, I don't think it's as simple as a regular driveway that would normally be permitted and be allowed. So I do think it's something that we should run through council. Okay. Specifically, you, but what reason? Because it was a non-conforming. Okay. And, and, and so they had to come before the Zoning Board of Appeals to get that permit to do that. So why wouldn't they have to do the same now? Why would they be able to add additional uses to that without having to appear? Fair point. Thank you very much. Okay. So the applicant Please. would like to say or make Thank a comment. Sure. 147 Lumber. So just a little bit of history on how that driveway was put in there. When I bought the property, I had legal frontage north of that driveway. Where the driveway is, it was an existing car path. So rather than fill in the wetlands on the north end of it, we used the existing car path as a way in to minimize the wetland. I certainly could have gone the other way, uh -huh. but I chose the path of least resistance, filling in, I think, 345 square feet of wetlands to get the driveway to fit. Could have gone the other way, but I didn't. Thank you. So Jennifer, my only question to you is, mm -hmm. it sounds like historically it's always been a conforming driveway, or has there been a non -conforming? Oh, no, so technically you are required to have your driveway access off your legal frontage because of the wet wetland issue, he went to the Board of Appeals at the behest of the Conservation Commission, I believe, to go get his driveway access off. Additional frontage he has, but it's not his legal frontage. That was grandfathered. Um, and that's the, the variance that he was given. The only condition on that variance was that the lot not be not further subdivided for residential use. So um, there was no other condition on that variance. Um, I don't know what else, how else to explain it. I think I've got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point, I think we should probably vote um, whether or not we want to have town council review the, the non-conforming um, request here that Muriel brought forth. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we simply ask town council to review uh, the non-conforming uh, access point and if uh, the additional use of the solar farm is acceptable over the non-conforming access. So there's a motion on the table. Is there a second? There's no second. I'll second it. Second. Discussion. So I do have one question on the discussion point. If this were to go to town council, is there any degree of confidence that this could be something that would be uh, back before the next time that the applicant is? I mean, I know? have no idea what council schedule is like, what their workload is like. I have no idea. I mean, I didn't know until I showed up here tonight that this was even an issue. So I no way of like trying to get from them what the possibility of getting this done quick. I honestly have no idea. Through you, Mr. Chair. I, I don't think we should factor in how long it's going to take. I think it's a do, doing the right thing. And I think we've had some uh, bad experiences in the past with the town in legal situations. So I'd let, rather take the safe route. No, I don't disagree yeah. with you all, David. It was yeah. just kind of more yeah, sure. just, uh, my own edification on that. I mean, I, I mean, I can. I'll put on the request that we need it, you know, in what, however many time, how much time the board would like. But I mean, if they can't get to it, I can't force their hand. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you know, Mariel and the member individual Tina from the public bring up a fair point. Um, I think that is something that we should review by council. But it is time for a vote, unless there's no further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. All those abstain? I'm going to abstain. So I think the ayes have it. Okay. All right. Jennifer, will you be able to put something together for? Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, check the box on number six. Uh, it's 947, I think, before moving into detailed discussion on the layout. Uh, we can move forward, or this might be a time for um, to call it for the night, and then kind of pick it up. Oh, 
Do you want to keep going? I can do either one. There was a note about something had to be approved by the 23rd. Is that right? The stormwater? Yeah, so the stormwater permit has to be approved by the 23rd or we need an extension. So is this, I was going to say, this, I think we need information from the Conservation Commission. Yeah, Yeah, yes. and I got a, a message that they've been continued till October 30th. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Stacy. Stacy, Stacy, and Thomas. So um, they, I think. Oh, yeah, you right. can't be heard, yeah. Um, I think the commission uh, would have considered closing and voting, although there were a few members missing, and so we requested a continuance to the next hearing. I do believe the um, stormwater questions have been addressed with beta. There's one remaining evaluation that we'll do um, with regard to the potential vernal pool, um, but don't anticipate that it'll substantially affect the stormwater design. But just background for why the continuance with the commission. That's helpful. Um, so I would not suggest that, right? that the board votes on these separately, though, if that's what you're thinking. I like, I would suggest that you ask the applicant for a continuation, I mean, for an extension of time to act on the stormwater permit. I think that's fair. If they meet on the 30th, and we meet on the 30th, we could. Again. I would argue that if you're asking town council for an opinion, you're not going to get it in two weeks. So does it make sense to uh, Well, we can't, reconvene? we really can't schedule the meeting at the same time the CONCOM is meeting anyway, if we want the public we to have that this conversation. Uh, yeah, we, so. that would be a bad day to Mm -hmm. um, so I think the next opportunity would be November 13th. 13th. Uh, I would like to have them first on the docket, if at all possible, and then at 7 30. Or. Is that when we invite? Of course, if it is. Mr. Barbier. It's, it's, it's all, it all just comes together. I'm That's just saying. Uh, we can move Mr. Barbier at um, that time. So we have um, some Barbier. And we have a um, open space landscape preservation development subdivision coming in for the first hearing that night. And we have a scenic road hearing that night. Can I get them on at 8.30? Well, that's when the scenic road hearing was scheduled because I gave the open space uh, permit. Can we, uh, can we meet at 7? Oh. Make a, a suggestion. Yes, yes, if it's amenable, um, I think our preference would be to request the Conservation Commission to continue their October 30th meeting because I do think we're very close okay. on, on their issues oh, okay. to allow us to meet with your board, understanding that you may not have the answer back from town council, but we continue can continue making progress on our review list. Yeah. Let me go through the check, checklist here. So that'd be, when are you on with so CONCOM, do you know? The 30th, but the they're going to request. Are they, are they, but is that first thing? Or are they first on the dock? Oh, they oh, didn't give us an estimated time. Um, I would just hate to. They have don't. It. They schedule everything for the same time. Right. So they'll give us an estimate, but it's subject to change. Perfect. So uh, October thirtieth again was the night that you wanted to have all these other discussions, it's pretty full. and it's already pretty full. So <laughs> we have um, seven thirty with police and fire um, master plan implementation discussion. We have an eight thirty with Golden Pond. Mm -hmm. Unless the board is amenable to coming in early, um, we can do try to do police and fire at seven if they can make it early. Is that possible? Is the fire chief still here? Chief, can, we can you come at seven on the thirtieth instead of seven thirty? So awesome. Thank you for that. Thanks, chief. And I heard seven thirty for Fox Mill Road earlier. Did I miss That's on that? the November thirteenth. Oh. oh. So can we get the applicant at seven thirty? I would say, yeah, for, yeah, for an hour, because we are doing so continuing to go to the 7th. On the 30th? On the 30th. 7th or 7th? Oh, 7th. We'll, 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 we'll do the other stuff at 7th. So October 30th at 7.30 p.m. And then you will look to the CONCOM to reschedule that meeting? Right. Well, either okay. if we're going to be so late in the evening that it won't conflict, but otherwise we'll request a continuance. So just as a reminder, it's really hard for the public to get to both places, so factor that in to, um, to the however time. it organizes. Yep. Thank do you. we need to vote to change yep. the meeting time? Yes, we do. <coughs> I, move, I make the motion that we move for our October 30th meeting to 7 p.m. Second. Second. Say 
motion and a second to move the meeting to 7.30 on the 30th. Correct, Jennifer? To, what, what, well, it's, he, he's, he's doing something different than you're yeah, doing, he's right? He's just starting time. He's just point. changing the starting time of the meeting, right? Okay, what did I... I'm lost now, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> what were you trying to do, Frank? What he said. <laughs> what did you say? Okay, so you're continuing this hearing. Oh, oh. So 7.30 sure. on October 30th. Correct, yes. That's what's in play. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? Motion carries. So 7.30 on the 30th. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And we'll get we there. will have the meeting at 7 with police and fire. Correct. Chief Slam at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Chief. Can we get me to Is he representing? Uh, the police are coming, too, so and we should ask well, that. Yeah, I'll double check with him. Yeah, but okay. he said, I mean, if 7.30 is okay, I'm sure 7. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they'd rather be here earlier and get out yeah, of there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. All right, do we need to vote to change the meeting of the time, time of the meeting? Meeting of that's the time, I'm hearing, tired. So. Yeah. All right, are there uh, any other uh, orders of business here? Oh, uh, you know what, just because we have a couple of minutes, the CPC is busy meeting, just to give you a little update, liaison update. Um, the school did come in with a very sophisticated proposal for CPC funding for fields. It's unclear how much of that is actually legally able to be funded by CPC, so that question is before town council right now. Um, and Parks and Rec came in with a laundry list of items, um, not a lot of detail yet. Um, and then next, uh, we meet again on Thursday for additional uh, projects. Mayor, what would the CPC, existing fields or? Uh, this is uh, to turf. The turf field? Uh, to thing? turf fields. If I have the numbers right, I hope I don't get the numbers wrong. So the football field is perhaps Phase two. four, and then below it, where softball soccer and soccer and yeah. baseball is, is field five. I may have the numbers five wrong, but start, is it five and six? Thank you. Okay, Randolph. so five and six to turf first, that it's a tiered request. Okay. And then the request also included um, the existing football field in, a, you know, in future years. That doesn't look like it's supportable at all because CPC doesn't allow any kind of um, funding for uh, any kind of field that could be considered part of a stadium well, so really yeah that's interesting so, yeah. yeah but it does it's not clear truthfully that um well and turf fields cannot be funded by cpc right there's either. a lot that can't be there's so a, there's a loss there was a legal so turf everything. case in newton against that is that right and they ruled that you cannot fund turf fields because yeah. it's artificial it's not yeah. natural grass so yeah and then nothing that is temporary that can be so anyway the entire so it's a it's it's certainly an organized and professional Thanks. request so the whole request of, is in front of town council to see if any of it is possible to be funded yeah very good uh any other business oh i just wanted to note um we had the legacy farms a number of school children in the back of the uh, meeting packet i just oh. wanted to the oh. public, I think the public is always interested in that. Yeah. So it looks like we have 270, or sorry, 207. 207. I was like, no, we shouldn't have 270. Let's <laughs> not <laughs> scare people. No, sorry, the 207 school children from Legacy Farms at the moment. Yep. And I believe Jennifer could probably confirm. I think they're not supposed to exceed 250 in the first six years without yep. paying a penalty. That so sounds right. So they have two more years to not get to 250. So what happens if they... Get the there's a financial it's like, payment. It's like fifteen thousand dollars. We, we don't take student. the kids out of pocket. Then. No, no, we do not. We do not. We do not send people packing. No, no, no. We ask Legacy <laughs> Farms to pay it. Right. It's good. It's, it's good calling me. Uh, anything else? Uh, I do want to say thank you very much for your help this evening. As John is out, uh, your guidance and assistance is much appreciated. Well, it's more thankful. We should be thanking you for oh, no, it's, it's, uh, having all you guys here makes it a lighter load to bear. <laughs> Jennifer, especially you and Kobe, I could not do without you. Bob, thank you very much. Yeah, just for a second. Jennifer, thank you very much for the, for the phone call today. You're welcome. Appreciate that at the last minute. Sure. Thank you all. I'm sorry I didn't step in sooner, and I apologize for not being able oh, no. to. No, it's all, it's all good. good. It's all yeah. good. See you on another night. Thanks, Bob. Take care. Night. That being said, uh, is there a motion to adjourn for the evening? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, abstain. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank Don't you. Tip your waitresses. Don't move.